Live. Welcome to the final day action of the 2020 BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Open here at Sam Rayburn Reservoir, Jasper, Texas is the host location. And it is the final day of action. We have cut the field and we have the top 12 pros and co-anglers vying for a victory today. Some guys have classic berths on the line. Some guys want to gather as many points towards an Elite Series berth. And here's the rules of the game. Like I said, we cut it down the field from roughly 220 anglers on day one and day two. Cut it down to just the top 12 on day three. Three days to fish, eight hours today to get it done. Five fish limit for the pros, three fish limit for the co-anglers. And at the end of three days, the heaviest three-day total weight gets you the victory. And we've got a tight, competitive top 12. And we say tight, you look at the standings and you're like, it's 10 pound gap from first to 10th, our first and 12th. How is that tight, Ronnie? Because Sam Rayburn has been kicking out some big, big weights this week. And we'll talk about those weights when we get into it. But the location, like we said, legendary Sam Rayburn Reservoir right there in Southeast Texas, place that's hosted Elite Series events and opens in the past. It has been a great destination, Texas Parks and Wildlife, working with them through Texas Fest over the years. But Sam Rayburn taking off at the south end of the lake and a lot of our top competitors headed towards the north right there above the main bridges there on the on the main drag of Sam Rayburn. And we're going to go out and check out some of the anglers live out on the water. We got to see a little bit on Facebook this morning. If you joined us, some action and we've gotten some good cell coverage with these anglers early on. And we have a three box with Keith Combs, Josh Douglas and Masayuki Matsushita. And you see in your bottom right Matsushita he was our day one leader, 27 pounds, 10 ounces, the biggest bag of the week. And you can see he started early this morning as the sun was just creeping over the horizon. Anglers made the run up the lake and started on their offshore brush piles and some of their shallow grass. And that's what she is obviously fishing offshore and caught a three pounder to start. And Matsushita, that was some of his, or his catch this morning unofficially would put him in the lead. The only angler we haven't heard, heard or seen from is our leader, Daryl Gleason, but Keith Combs, Josh Douglas, they're all in the similar region and we can break that down. We got a lot of time to get to that specific locations and key patterns. We will see that transpire today. As, we, as you see, there are obviously two anglers in the boat. That's why our cameras will be boat to boat today with the top five anglers. We will get as close as we can and get the details from them and watch it, but it is good to see live fishing on the final day of a BassPro.com Bassmaster Open. We had a great time doing this for the Arkansas River just a few months ago. Like I mentioned, the top 12 fishing today. Here's your top 10 leaderboard, Daryl Gleason. 44 pounds, four ounces after two days of competition. That was a 17 pound bag and a 27 pound bag for him. Masayuki Matsushita had a 27 pound bag on day one. We see Chris Wilson unofficially moving from seventh into third. Josh Douglas started our morning in third place. He's in fourth right now. Brian Schott, Keith Combs, Shane Campbell, Logan Latuso, Brian Post, and Gerald Swindle. We also have Albert Collins, great Sam Rayburn angler, great Toledo Bend angler. He started the morning in 11th. We also have Jason Christie in 12th place, and that's our top 12. For the pro side, the Coes are obviously fishing for prizes as well, and we will get to those competitors, and we will see them catch them from the back of the boat today. It has been a very interesting turn of events. We showed the leaderboard there and it hasn't been, you know, you think about the 44 pounds that's leading it. Has that been consistent? No, it hasn't. 17 pounds on day one, 27 pounds on day two for Daryl Gleason. Matsushita had 27 on day one, 15 on day two. Josh Douglas, 22 and 19. A lot of these guys have been catching a big bag followed up by a a smaller bag or vice versa, and even Brian shot. He also caught a 27 pound bag on day one, followed it up with 14 pounds on day two, and that was how we got us in our top four. Well, they want to eat today. I had a, you had two bites on it, I had a bite on it. Two, um, two, are you okay?
Keith Combs. You know him from the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is his stomping grounds, Huntington, Texas, near the north side of the lake. Basically left his house, launched at the bottom side of the lake to basically drive by boat to the nearest place to his home. My co's got one fish, uh, about a good three pounder, and uh, it's a slow morning, man. Just it's it's slow fishing out here in general on Rayburn right now. You know, if you're if you're doing the right thing to try to catch a big fish, um, I think you're not going to get many many bites. It's gonna be long, stressful periods with no bites. But uh, you know, we're fishing the fishing a pattern that can produce a you know eight or ten pound fish at any time. So we're just going to stick with it. All we got to get is five. Uh, I got a long day and a lot of places to hit, but I haven't got one yet. Keith Combs, obviously one to fear here in Texas and nationwide, and We're out here, he I is a two-time Elite Series champion. Falcon Lake, the opposite side of Texas, he got it done there, breaking the century mark. Really telling the world about it. We've had a couple great events at Falcon and Keith Combs has been featured in a couple of those and he was able to take that title over Rick Clun in 2013. An interesting event. It actually turned into a five day event, four days of competition, but the final day was dusted out. A heavy, heavy windstorm postponed that day. They moved it to the next day and he won it there. And then talk about opposite fishing somewhat. His second Elite Series win coming up north at Mille Lacs Lake. 2017 Angler of the Year Championship event. Took the title there, but hey, similar approach. A fantastic offshore angler. No surprise to see him be successful there and at Falcon fishing offshore. And no surprise to see him in our top 12 this week at Sam Rayburn, right in his backyard fishing offshore. And it's gonna be interesting to see how he breaks down the brush this week. Some of those offshore spots as well that don't have brush, but a lot of our anglers concentrating in that that teen depth range, you know, 13 to 20 feet of water. It's where a lot of brush piles are and a lot of timber, a lot of wood on Sam Rayburn. And that's where a lot of fish have been caught this week. A lot of big ones as well. Combs, we mentioned, started the morning in fifth place. He had 19 pounds on day one, 21 on day two. That's about as consistent as it gets for our top 12. It's really been do or die, like I mentioned earlier. Day one weights and day two weights vastly different. It will be a Saturday on Sam Rayburn, so not only will there be 12 Bassmaster Opens anglers, but there should be plenty of other boats out there fishing as well. Sam Rayburn, a great lake and a tough time of year, but a time of year where you really see some of the biggest fish in the lake get caught. As we see our photographers out on the water as well with our pros documenting it all. A lot of these guys lining it up on their electronics, knowing where that brush is that they found in practice or in the tournament, staying as far away as they possibly can to make an accurate cast and to still fish through that cover. And we're gonna see a lot of worms, a lot of jigs, even some crankbaits. With Keith Combs on camera, you know we're gonna see some crankbaits for sure. And there has been definitely a rise of the Japanese angler in the Bassmaster Opens. We see Taku Ito on the Bassmaster Elite Series doing well. Second in the Angler of the Year, first in Rookie of the Year, and he qualified last year through the Opens. We see guys like Masayuki Matsushita. We had Daisuke Ayuki at the Arkansas River. Hopefully I said his last name correctly. A lot of Japanese anglers gracing our top 10 week after week on the Elite Series and the Opens. They are here to stay. and. Great competitors showing their skill. A lot of them fishing offshore. That's what they do. That's what they've done growing up. Ooh, train wreck out here. Combs started the day less than four pounds back, about three pounds, three pounds, 10 ounces, three and a half pounds, give or take. He'll look to make up that gap today. Masayuki started in second, one pound, five ounces behind. 
He already has one in the boat to unofficially be in the lead with that three pounder. <clears throat> we'll get the bass track totals updated and whatnot throughout the day. Let these guys get situated, get started on the final day. Start to formulate the leaderboard and see those weights rise and fall. Conditions this week have been sunny, not a lot of wind. The only real wave action you get is from boat traffic. They've been pulling the water some, it's been dropping level wise. Each day of competition just slightly, but enough to make a difference from when the practice started. Been hot, hot, hot temperatures in Texas. Water temperatures in that mid to upper 80s. Some places 85, 86, some places 88, 89 degrees. And that's why a lot of these anglers catching them offshore have been more successful. There was a shallow grass bite I heard in practice. It's been one that's been utilized. It's been getting harder and harder each day for the anglers though, with that rising water temperature in certain areas getting hotter. A little falling water with the level dropping as well. Those shallow fish aren't as safe and secure. They might want to wander off and move a little deeper. And for some of our guys like Josh Douglas mentioned that his biggest fish of the week, they've came offshore, but they've came in seven to 10 feet of water where the rest of his brush piles and stuff that have paid off have been 12 to 20 feet of water. Those shallowest brush piles he has have yielded some of the biggest fish of the week. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out today. It will be an all day affair though. Some of these guys took all day long to catch their five keepers that they weighed in. Some caught on their last stop of the day, a six pounder to call out and head back to weigh in. A lot of lost big fish stories this week. Rayburn has been pumping out some big ones. Three bags over 27 pounds in the South Texas fishery. I mentioned Josh Douglas. Josh Douglas's co are getting in on the action as well. They are fighting for prizes today. Plenty of opportunity to win for them as well. And some of these co-anglers use their winnings today and in tournaments this year to propel them to the front of the boat. Opportunity to be a pro maybe next year or in future years. Way in a 220. And call them all day. That is Mr. Robert Kessler. Robert Kessler fishing with Josh Douglas from the back of the boat. And Kessler started his final day in seventh place, 15 pounds for two days of fishing. Like we said, three fish limit for the co-anglers. So catching one means a whole lot more to them than the pro. They're a third of the way to their limit when they catch one keeper. He started the day six pounds behind. Dusty Frank had 15 pounds for three fish on day one and then five pounds for three fish on day two. Oh. I like it. I want two boats this year on that each other leg. Really? What is it? Is it a jump dinger? Kind of casting rod? Pardon? Casting or spinning? Yeah, no, casting. Oh boy. 15 pounds for us. Oh, I believe that. Josh Douglas, bottom left of your screen, you can hear the conversation between him and his co the Robert Kessler. Kessler just caught a keeper. I believe it's a keeper. He's messing with it in the bottom of the boat. Long enough getting it unhooked, and Douglas is an interesting one to watch. He is doing very well overall in the points race to try to qualify for the Elite Series, and in his career, the Bassmaster Opens, he has six top 20 finishes, six top 20s. A lot of those happened in 2017. A lot of those happened in 2015 okay. as well. So close to qualifying both years for the Elites, just missing out by just a few spots. See Keith Combs, co-angler catching one as well. 
That would be keeper number two for his co-angler. Mr. Hayden Heck started the day in fourth place, only about a pound and a half off the lead. So that is a good sign for Hayden that he's got two fish in the boat. Only needs one more to have a limit. He could be on his way to a co-angler title. We've seen big bass this week. Eight pounds, 13 ounces on the co-angler side. What is amazing is that that does not guarantee making the cut. 8.13 on the co-angler side for Ben Schuler Did not make the cut this week for the top 12. You have to catch them, have to get your limit. One fish will not do. And on the pro side, Albert Collins, a living legend in this region of Texas. Texas in general, but for sure Toledo, Ben, and Sam Rayburn. He caught a nine pound, nine pound, 12 ouncer yesterday to anchor his 20 pound bag, which shows that it wasn't easy out there. One fish for nine, 12, four fish, making up roughly 10 pounds. So Collins needed that big one to make it to today. He did so for, by just uh, less than half a pound. Out of here now? Yeah. All right. But he's a dangerous one to watch on the final day. Hold it up. Keith Combs making a move at the top of your screen. I mean, his co angler, Hayden Heck. Moving on, like I said, some of these guys are going to be rolling up to their locations, their brush piles, make three to five casts, maybe 10 casts at most, and then head on to another one, especially they have 50 brush piles or so, some of these anglers, that they'll, uh, they'll need to catch them by surprise, basically. Don't let them know you're there. Make a move, catch some fish. Josh yeah, Douglas on the move as well. Yuki Matsushita staying put though. He has fished this spot since this morning. Keeping it honest. Masayuki will have a shot at the Bassmaster Classic berth. Did fish the first one. That is in question sometimes for anglers. I believe Brian Schott and Shane Campbell are our highest two anglers that did not fish the first open, so they cannot make the Bassmaster Classic. But Masayuki Matsushita can make the Classic. Didn't do too great at the Arkansas River, but as long as you fish them and then get a win in one of them, you will be fine. He does have a third place finish in 2017 Grand Lake in, an, in a Bassmaster Central Open. And like we said, he's part of the contingent that has shown they, here, they are here to stay and they are competitive. The Japanese anglers have been fantastic, not only at the Opens level, but on the Elite Series level. We got to see Taku Ito, a product of the Opens, fished last year, four Opens for him last year, qualified for the Elites and is making a big splash in his rookie season. Taku Ito, Lake St. Clair, the Northern Swing, shoot, all of 2020. Taku Ito has been fantastic. Three top tens up north. Okay, number two, number two. Fantastic angler. Really loving life, battling adversity, dealing with everything that 2020 has thrown at him and he has stayed put in America to pursue his dream of the Elite Series. A lot of obstacles along the way, and he has set the example. Anglers before him have set the example, given him the dream to come and pursue the Elite Series goal, and he is making that happen in his rookie year, setting the stage for a lot of other Japanese anglers that are competing at this Bassmaster Opens level. 
looking to qualify for the Elite, looking to make the Classic, looking to make their mark in bass fishing. Bright young star, Taco Ito. <laughs> has been a pleasure to have him on camera as much as we have this year. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. We've really seen him grow from the first time we had him on camera at the St. Lawrence River. He was calling everything a three pounder and now yes. he'll be a little more honest, a little more accurate yes. with us. He's confident in himself and his ability yes. and come on, come on, come on. a lot of these anglers are rooting for each other. It is a tight knit group to take that chance to come from Japan to pursue your dreams and fish the Bassmaster Opens to qualify for the elites. Come on. It is an awesome group to be a part of. Yes. Oh. It's paying off big time. What? Halfway through the season for Taku. He got his first introduction to a lamprey as well at Lake St. Clair. What the? Lamprey eel. Lamprey eel. <laughs> he had no idea what to do with it, but our cameraman got him situated. Okay. He removed okay. that from the smallmouth. What do you think? Good? Good one, but. <laughs> that is just a look into some of the promising Japanese anglers. We have one on camera today, Masayuki Matsushita and Taku Ito on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Like we see Keith Combs, Josh Douglas, they've made moves. We just saw them pack up just a minute ago, and they've already stopped and continue to fish. So a lot of guys are going to be hopping and skipping and jumping from one brush pile to another. Keeping them honest, seeing which one has active feeding fish on it. Like one of the anglers I've interviewed on the phone last night said, hey, we got to keep them, keep them surprised. Don't stay too long. They'll know you're there. Roll up, make the perfect cast. See if you can catch the fish and utilize all the practice and time you've put into it. Looks like Josh Douglas is hooked up. No? Maybe hung up in the brush? His cow angler looks hooked up. Mr. Robert Kessler. That's a good one. Looks like a good, good fish for him. Those are difference makers on Rayburn, but really difference makers when there's only a three fish limit for the co-anglers. Having that be one of your three is going to be fantastic for Robert. We've seen a Hayden Heck in the back of Keith Combs' boat. Robert Kessler in the back of Josh Douglas' boat. Both with two fish in the boat right now. Combs is on the move again. got not only cameras out with the top five, but we have photographers and bloggers out with some of our top anglers as well. Steve Bowman is out there with Daryl Gleason. Daryl Gleason had a big flotilla of boats this morning. Follow him to his first area. He is a local Louisiana slash Texas guy. Gleason does have two keepers in the boat. We'll keep you updated on that. Hopefully we'll be able to see him. He's in this neck of the woods where Douglas, Matsushita, Keith Combs, they're all in similar areas of the lake, of this big fishery, a given area. They're all in that same region. That seems to be the area right up there where Castle Boykins is top of the lake where the uh, 
the common uh, popular boat ramp is. That's been the, the main area. So hopefully we'll be able to see that from Daryl Gleason today. He's got two fish in the boat. Nothing really worth bragging about, but they are place keepers. They are holding a spot in his limit. Once you get a limit, you can worry about getting rid of the small ones, but it's important to have a limit in the boat. Nerves are in the air this morning. It's the final day of the BassPro.com Bassmaster Opens. A lot of quiet anglers who are just trying to feel their way through this morning portion. Make sure they execute when they can because it is a long day. It's not been easy out on Sam Rayburn, but the big fish have been active and have been caught this week. That's why no one in the top 12 is out of it. Even if you're nine pounds and change back like Jason Christie is in 12th with 27 pound bags swimming around. 30 pound bags, the, a lot of those guys that have had the greatest days of anyone on Rayburn this week have said they could have been even better. Slight mistakes, misfortune caused those to be uh, 27 instead of 30 pound days. Matsushita's co-anglers hooked up. Go, go. Stack. That fish or not? Oh. Daryl Gleason getting a first look at him. We'll show you some footage today. <laughs> We're gonna take commercial breaks every 30 minutes today. And when we come back, we will see plenty of action. Make sure you join us. Daryl Gleason hoping to go to another Bassmaster Classic, the 2019 Opens winner at Toledo Bend, looking to win not far from his home over at Sam Rayburn this week. And if he can do so, possibly punch his ticket to another Bassmaster Classic. There's our leaderboard, the top 10 unofficially right now. We'll see you right after commercial break. Join us in just a few minutes, Bassmaster.com. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. We will be able to see what's going on each and every moment um, from here until weigh-in. As we're checking out Masayuki Matsushita. I'm not going to ask you to pronounce that, Brian. <laughs> he started quick this morning with a three-pounder, and word from the water was he caught a five to six-pounder to back it up for number two. Got some good quality there. He does have some, and that's the, some of these guys have been filling their limits pretty quick with those I'm one to two pounders. Bumps. Those don't help you. A lot of these guys have maybe been riding it around all day long to catch their five biggest ones. You know, some of those guys catching a six pounder at their last stop of the day to fill their limit. There's, it's a kind of a two strategy deal. Right. That usually occurs when you're fishing a lot of offshore stuff. Yeah. And we'll get into it for sure with, with you, Brian. You know that some of these brush piles don't have any bait, don't have any bass. They're just a tree underwater, and some will have the bait. The bass aren't there yet, and some have a mixture of both, and those ones that have, have oh. the bait and the bass are the ones that you want to be around. Oh. 
Here's that big one that we talked about. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, that is a good one. Yes. yes. I think that's over five. <laughs> five pound. Yes, I agree, Brian. He called it a five. I definitely could see that being a six pounder. And sitting there with two fish in the boat right now, unofficially on Bass Track. And that's, you know, he started one pound, five ounces behind. That is literally nothing on this lake. We said first through 12th, all the way down from Daryl Gleason to Jason Christie, nine pounds, 14 ounces, nine pounds, 12 ounces. That seems like a big, big margin. When 27 pounds right. is a big bag here and when a nine, 12 is the big bass for the week, that is, we always say that on the Elite Series, if you are within the weight of the single biggest bass in the tournament so far, you have yeah. a chance to win. And that's what first to 12th is today. Well, and you see that a lot, you know, this year, 10th place guys, 8th place guys coming back to win. And, you know, I, I like his strategy, though. He, he's definitely doing the quality versus quantity. And I, I think, you know, when fishing's a little tougher this time of year, that's one of the best ways to approach that. One of the hardest things, it seems, at least in late, late summer, like we are, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's still hot in Texas. The water temp's still in the high 80s. The deal is, though, you're going to catch a big bag one day and you can't follow it up with consistency. You know, we've seen uh, Masayuki have 27.10 on day one and then 15 pounds yesterday. We saw Daryl Gleason have 17 pounds on day one and then 27 pounds yesterday. So how is, I mean, it's hard to have a set weight for these guys on the final day because you've caught one almost 30 pounds and you've caught one in the teens. It's like you got to find at least 20 pounds even is, is probably your goal, but even then it might not be enough. Right, and you know what happens a lot of times is just is just it's a timing thing in their rotation. So if you can get the right rotation, you get those 25, 26, 27 pound stringers, and then you're down to that 12 to 15 if you have a wrong rotation. And you know it's a lot of it's the conditions. Slick calm's not real great for brush pile fishing. It looks like they've got a great day out there with just enough chop break up that surface water but still be able to position that boat correctly. We have had high suns, if I can get that one out, we've had high suns all week. Uh, those 90 degree temperatures that we totally expect in the summer here and like you said Brian, offshore fishing, some of those schools on those brush piles might be grouped up size wise. You roll up to a brush pile, can maybe catch two eight pounders or you roll up to a brush pile and catch a bunch of two pounders. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, for you, do you like to pull up like some of these guys are and just stay all day or stay for a good hour on a brush pile? Or are you one of those guys that likes to run uh, and, and hit it with three to five casts and then keep running? Because we're seeing uh, Daryl Gleason, our leader right now. Most of the time you kind of let the fish tell you how fast to move. You know, you don't want to leave some place that the fish are biting, especially if they're better than average size. Um, so I'm going to stay longer if they're the three plus pound fish. Uh, I'm going to move a lot quicker when they're that two pound and three quarters to two and a half pound fish. Um, and a lot of times with electronics now, you know, that we've, that we've got such great electronics that we're able to see how many fish are around those brush piles and know exactly what we, we're fishing down there. And that kind of also dictates how long I stay. If I see more fish, a lot of times I'll stay longer even if I'm not getting a bite. And a lot of these anglers explained on the phone to me that, hey, I've got a bunch of brush piles. I've got a bunch of waypoints that I, I found in practice that are marked with a green tree. And when I catch a fish off of them in a tournament, I mark them as a red tree so that I can tell. Uh, you still might try those green trees on the final day, you know, some fresh brush piles that you haven't tried, but how oftentimes do you win dwindle your waypoints down from maybe 50, 60 brush piles, and you're gonna have your rotation of maybe 10 on that final day, the ones that have really been good to you. Yeah, and that, that happens a lot. You know, you go out there and you're trying to find as many as you can in practice because you don't know what the potential of those are. But once you start bearing down in the tournaments and actually catching fish from there, you'll find those brush piles that are really holding the fish versus the ones that maybe only have one or two on it. And I'm, I'm sure that's what they're doing is they're, the last day they're going to key in on those brush piles that have definitely produced throughout the week. And they may add a, one or two new ones to the mix that's either on the way to the next good one or one that they, they caught some in practice and uh, kind of saving it for the last day. Uh, you know, if, if a guy's familiar with the lake, which several of these top 12 anglers are, you know, they're gonna save a few for the last day. Daryl Gleason, our day two leader right there, top left of your screen, currently third place. He called them purple piles, Brian. <laughs> purple Every pile. single waypoint he's changed to the color purple has been good to him this week, and he's got a key one that he's caught two fish over eight pounds on. Yesterday, 
27 pounds brought to the scales, and that's why he took the lead. That was a 9 7 wow. and an 8 11. He had a 9 7 and an 8 11 Off to the same anchor brush his bag. Pile. I, I think he caught an 8 on day one on a brush pile, and that 8 11 on the other brush mm -hmm. pile. The 9 7 came from another place, but I said, hey, when you roll up to that brush pile, let me know today. Let me know <laughs> on camera so we can be ready. Is he going to give the thumbs up for that? Yeah, he'll, he said he was going to like twitch, maybe like, you know, shake his lower half or something. A little different, but I don't know. Well, I, he's, I'm he's, gonna, maybe, maybe audibly, that would be good if he did let us know. He seems fairly calm, so I don't know if he's on the nine pile, nine I, pound brush I would pile right be, now. I would be shaking with every cast for sure. And I think uh, Gleason with, with the small ones in the boat this morning, Steve Bowman's been out on the water covering him. He's one that's very interesting because he is a guide on Toledo and Sam Rayburn, but he tours nationally, fishes, mm -hmm. fishes across the country, and fishes all the opens as well. Made the Bassmaster Classic this year and fished at Gunnersville via an open win at Toledo Bend last year. So for someone, hey, you probably think that when a tournament comes to Table Rock, Brian's, I, I want to be in the mix. For someone to be a local but also a national angler to compete at Toledo and Sam Rayburn and, and beat some of the best of the best that fish it, it's got to feel good. Oh, well, you know, it always does. And, and you, you know, people think you get to fish your home lake a lot. Um, when you're traveling, fishing the tour and then the opens, he's got a busy schedule and he probably guides half on Rayburn, half on Toledo Bend. <laughs> so you really, you know, you spend some time on your local lakes, but not as much as people think. And we've got a couple familiar faces. Keith Combs, top right, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro two time champion there. Boy, and he's always deadly in Texas, isn't he? <laughs> he is. I said that he drove from his home south to take off and then got in his boat and drove back up to the to north home. side of the lake, not far from his home uh, on the lake when you consider it there. But between Gleason, Combs, a lot of experience here. And then uh, Masayuki, he is an opens pro, fished here for a little while. Brian Schott, he is not far. He's a local from Sam Rayburn as well. And he definitely looks to be the shallowest out of the group. He said he was going to mix it up today. He was really non-committal on what he was going to do. Wasn't fishing exactly shallow, not fishing completely deep, but he's mixing it up a pretty good bit. And Brian, I appreciate you joining us. We're going to we're going to continue this live coverage and we're going to go to commercial break real quick. Thank you for joining us. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're glad to be back watching these anglers fish. As we go to commercial break, look at our unofficial top 10 right now. Masayuki, Matt, Matt Sushita, I'm going to leave that to you, Brian, next segment. <laughs> Shane Campbell, local down at the south end of Rayburn. Gerald Swindle making a run. He's in third place from the 10th place starting spot. Harold Gleason, Brian Schott, and the rest of our anglers. We'll see five of them live when we get back from commercial break. Join us just a little bit from now. Bassmaster Live on Bassmaster.com. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Or welcome back to the final day action, Sam Raymer Reservoir, the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Open. Jasper, Texas is our host, and here's your unofficial top 10 right now. Masayuki Matsushita. I said I was gonna let you do it, Brian, but I took it off the top. Shane Campbell, local product down at the south part of south end of Rayburn. He's in second place right now. We should keep an eye out for him. Gerald Swindle, Bassmaster Lead Series Pro, moved up from 10th to third place unofficially. Daryl Gleason, our day two leader, dropped back to fourth. And Brian Schott is in fifth place, rounding out our top five right now. And we mentioned it, Masayuki Matsushita had a 27-pound bag on day one, was our day one leader, biggest bag of the tournament, 27-10. Yes. Yes. Started wow. quick with Sweep about a three-pounder this morning. Yeah. And then it went slow go for a little while until this second keeper. And Brian, we get to see this last segment. Oh, oh look at this one. Oh. No. He's not swinging it in the boat, as you noticed. Yes! 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 yes. <laughs> I found them. And then moments ago. Oh, looks like a good one. Yeah. Looked like he, he did get it stuck in the brush mm, there. Yep. You could see it. Oh. Spots? Spotted. Spots? Yes. I'm on the hop. Spots. Three keepers in the boat for 
Masayuki. And then there's our day two leader, Daryl Gleason. The local Toledo Ben Sam Rayburn product. Was, was that a spinning reel I saw? I, I think so. He's been using my first day. Been using a drop shot a little bit. Keith Combs, we know him from the Bassmaster Lead Series. We got to see him catch a few this morning. This was earlier today during during the period when we had technical difficulties, and I'm going to show you that now. We want to say he's throwing a crankbait. Oh no, he's not. He's, he's got a jig. a jig. Yeah. That has been the bait. That's going to be a big one. Overall, I've heard from the top 12, more than any other bait. Football jig, football jig, football jig. It's funny how some guy, oh, Josh Douglas as well. Mm-hmm. He is one who's mixed in a big worm, a jig, drop shot, but then also had a, a swim bait and a crank bait, you know, when he's, when he's as far as he can get away from the, the brush piles. Yeah, it was like a thunk, you know, that, yeah, that's going to be all right. Well, this was, well, that's an all right one. Maybe if that's his smallest or his, his, fourth, his fourth biggest in his bag, whatever. Like we said, Brian Snowden joining us in studio. Thanks for making the drive down from Table Rock. I appreciate you coming down. And obviously you fish Sam Rayburn quite a bit with the Elite Series and throughout Texas Fest and other events. It's a place that you're never out of it. Always big bag potential. It definitely does. You know, just any any cast could be a nine pounder, and that's that's what's so great about this lake. And as you can see, you saw some guys move up the leaderboard. Um, they're definitely within striking distance. Swindle's done a great job of moving up, only a few ounces out of first place. So. Uh, that's what keeps it interesting. You always know that uh, it's going to come down to the wire on Sam Rayburn. I wanted to ask all the guys what was their target weight uh, going into the final day, but it's very difficult when most of the guys have had 24, 25, 27 pound bags and then followed them up with 14, 15, 16. They got to find some kind of consistency and it hasn't been a big change up in weather. It's been uh, the same weather the last two days of competition. It's just the rotation like you said sometimes you start on stuff day one and you don't need to start on it you need to end on it and do your rotation backwards the next day and then all of a sudden you have a giant bag some guys very confused they run the same rotation and it just doesn't yield that maybe you're fishing behind other anglers that fish those yeah, that, brush piles as well yeah and, and you know and it's, it's, it's such a difficult time of year um you know it's it's one of those times of year that's always challenging so this has been an impressive tournament for this time of year you know with the weights they've caught and uh, i think you're going to see the, the end uh, today you know the, the guy that comes out on top is definitely going to have to have over 20 pounds i feel like this is a good precursor to what the three event elite series stretch is going to be at Gunnersville, Santee Cooper and, and Lake Chickamauga, where guys will catch 20, 25 okay. pounds and then and then have 12 the next mm -hmm. day. And then or some guys bring in three for 16 just to certain, you know, they, they that's all they caught that day. And but they're big ones because these lakes have them. They start to show up this time of the year as that fall is, is approaching, is encroaching. Um, but it's still not easy to pinpoint them daily. Right, and it's just, it's just the time of year and the water's still so warm. You know, if we were here when the water was in the 60s, you'd see a lot more of those big fish caught, but um, they're, they're doing an excellent job, you know, working this, the structure that they've got and uh, the fish that want to cooperate. And I think that's why you've seen some of the guys start using some spinning, you know, spinning equipment with a drop shot. They've pounded on these brush piles for a while, and now they're getting those drop shot finesse techniques down. <laughs> We've got a double right now with Daryl Gleason and his co-angler. Let me see who that co-angler is with him. Daryl Gleason and Ken Sanders. This one was too as soon as he got to the boat. Ken <laughs> Sanders started his day in eighth. Daryl with the lead. Uh, Co-anglers are randomly paired with the pros. It's not always mm -hmm. the best co-angler with the best pro. It's oh, random. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's got a pretty decent one on here. You know, it's... It, it's really amazing. You can throw a lot of different baits into a brush pile and uh, not get a bite with the drop shot. Always seems to produce some fish. It just, day in and day out, is the most consistent technique when you're fishing structure. A lot of numbers, not always the biggest ones, but when you need to catch some fish, I always have it ready to go. And for some of these guys who have been using it to get a, a better than average fish or a <laughs> Once these brush piles get pounded to pick up an extra bite, Josh Douglas mentioned yeah. <laughs> yesterday on the phone, he lost an eight pounder on a drop shot yesterday. He set the hook, it went the other way through the brush pile, came up, jumped, and his line was in the brush pile as his fish was out. He fought with it for 10 minutes, couldn't get it out, and ended up just sawing off his line. And that's a heartbreaker for him, somebody who's in, you know, a pound and a half, two pounds out of the lead, to have, to have an eight happen, pounder yeah. and, and weigh in a two it. and three corner, yeah. 
is very difficult. But Daryl, he told me on the phone, and I'm going to call him out on this. He said, I'm going to lock yeah. a football jig in my hand all day. And now we've seen a drop shot. <laughs> Until he gets a limit, of course. And when he gets a limit, he will probably uh, try to call up specifically with that. And we saw him catch two on the spinning yes, drop he, shot. Gleason said, uh, I think he's caught three on day one on a football jig, and then he caught all five yesterday. And that's the difference in 17 pounds and 27 right. pounds. Having all five of your bites come on a football jig. He's throwing a three quarter ounce VM football jig with a J Bug on the back and Gleason's candy. His his own it's always good when you can catch him on your, your own, own bait, signature yeah. color. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing he sent me the photo last night. And well and he probably knows what colors to, you know work best down there. Exactly. Since he fishes it all the time. <laughs> We're watching Daryl Gleason on the left, Josh Douglas on the right. Douglas is one of those opens pros that has fished so many years and has been so close to Elite Series qualification. Missed out on the Classic just narrowly in events. He's got six top 20s in the opens. And he's missed the points race by less than five spots at least three or four times. Doing very well in the points race. I teased it up a little earlier, especially to you, Brian. I said, we got to see Daryl catch a giant on day two. He caught a 9-7 and an 8-11, and he was c kind enough to send us that footage yesterday. And this is one of his, what he calls an ocean pony. <laughs> some guys call them giants, some guys call them slaunches. Oh, he calls it an ocean pony. Yeah. His ocean pony's way out there, did you see that? It was, it jumped a couple times during this fish oh. catch. And, what you doing, baby? and he's barefooted, you know what I mean? You gotta love that. Look at that. Oh. Oh, get There's this football of jig. Wow. Listen. To oh my God! That weighs as much as my dog does. Weighs as much as his dog does. So I don't know if his dog is eight eleven or nine seven, but that is a really good one. And that was he had the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the tournament for a little bit there at nine seven until Albert Collins came and bested him with a nine twelve. Doesn't that make you feel sick? You catch a nine and a half pounder and don't win Big Bass for the tournament. That's got to be brutal. Yeah, one time at Falcon, I had a twelve. Seven or something? No big bass. Can you believe that? <laughs> Biggest one I've ever weighed in. We, had, we just had a two box with Daryl Gleason and Josh Douglas and wanted to show you that catch from Gleason. And here's oh, a live here's catch. Here's another drop shot. A live catch from Josh. Like we mentioned on a drop shot. He's one of those Minnesota pros. Loves spinning, spinning gear when he can use it. Oh, a little bigger than he thought there. That rub rail always gets in the way. Another solid one from him. But we've seen Actually, we, down yesterday when I was like, <laughs> we've seen giants and and dinks with these guys, and he's caught two in the last couple of minutes that are you know two and a half to three pounds. Yeah, the, you know he's he's got the largemouth on the drop shot where a lot of the other guys were catching the spotted bass, which you know definitely is not what you want to have in your bag when you're at Sam Rayburn. What the hell is going on top of his head? And get it to fall in there, it'll bite. Looks like he's warning. You. You Two pounds, hear. maybe. God dang it. Tell Two me, for Jeff. three and a quarter. Two for three and a quarter. Three and a Two for three and a quarter. No, not three and a quarter, no. <laughs> I might need to check my scale after that. <laughs> Douglas said to me that the lake's about two and a half, three feet low. Um, surprising with, with the hurricane that came through the Lake Charles region just, just east of where Sam Rayburn is. He said not a lot of those, uh, not a lot of those places necessarily drained into Rayburn that had all that flooding, you know, and, and if they did, Rayburn was prepared for it and already had water pulling and moving. And that's a couple locals said, a couple of my favorite areas on Rayburn are destroyed because of the amount of current that they pulled in anticipation of the current, of, 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 the, the, flood. of the floods, actually moved the brush. He's like, I don't know where the brush is. Like it's gone, like it's, it's some, the brush pile's actually gone from those spots. 
but now it's now it's three feet low from when practice started the grass had more water on it and he said he tried it for two days but it was work like it was hard work to catch five fish out of the grass yeah. that were you know 15 pounds so he said he started graphing and did awesome. nothing but graphing for two days of practice and has found 50 50 brush piles that he thought were, were solid, caught a seven pounder out of one of them in practice and didn't fish anymore. And so then he went on faith of what he saw in his brush piles. And, and like you said, it's those ones that have bluegill around them or bait around them or the ones that have fish activity. Some are spotted bass, some are largemouth. It's really important dialing that in. Well, and then with the lake falling, that should just only help out the brush piles. You know, I really thought we would uh, see a lot more cranking that seven to nine foot grass line, but uh, I think due to the water falling so rapidly, that it moved them out of the grass line edge on out into the deeper brush piles. Looks like Gleason caught another one on a drop shot there. Got Keith Combs' co-angler, Hayden Heck. He's done good. This will be his third keeper, I believe, of the of the deal, which is his limit yes. for a co-angler, yeah. three fish limit. He'll, He's him good. and Combs will be relieved. <laughs> <laughs> And Hayden Hex got an opportunity, started the day in fourth, one pound, 12 ounces out of the lead, three fish limit. He had like a, he had a, oh, he's culling right now. Oh yeah, he's For definitely real, gonna move yeah, up. He definitely will, he'll really have a good shot at winning this. He's one of those guys who had a big bag. He had 13, 11 yesterday with three fish. That is a good day. Holmes is hooked up, they've found a spot obviously. Similar sized fish. Yeah, I seen them dudes. I seen them here on a graph. When I looked at this spot. And the thing you've got to watch with Keith is That's, it just yeah, takes him about probably. 15 minutes in the right spot. I've seen him do it on Lake Fork. I've seen him do it on Conroe. Um, he's pretty deadly when that crankbait's in play. Some guys are deadly when they're on the water for eight hours, and some are deadly. <laughs> When they get a couple casts yeah, the right at, a, spot. at a certain spot. Yeah. He's got plenty of those right awesome. spots. It's which one's which one's firing when he pulls up. Looks a little busy out there today. Yeah, it's Sam Rayburn on a Saturday. We should I feel better. like we're gonna see Daryl Gleason put this spinning rod down. And I say that even though he started catching fish on it, because he'll be getting close to his limit. He'll fill his limit pretty soon and then he'll he'll realize, hey, and if I can't Cole one and a half with two and a half with a spinning rod. I need to just throw that football jig now. Well, you know his confidence has got to be really high in catching another quality fish like he did the first day, I believe. You know. He must be using morning dawn. Look like it did look like morning dawn. I believe Josh Douglas sent me his drop shot color morning dawn as well. That wasn't a keeper for Daryl Gleason. We're gonna see a lot of techniques come into play today. We're starting to see it fire up. Keith Combs, Daryl Gleason, Josh Douglas. Tune in after the commercial break for more Bassmaster Live. Live coverage of the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live will return after this short break. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Back out on Sam Rayburn, moves are being made today on the final day of competition. We see Keith Combs, bottom left of your screen, taking off, heading to a new spot, rotating a lot of different brush piles. And we have Brian Snowden, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, in studio with us, breaking it down. And we're watching the leader, Daryl Gleason, and it actually looks like he's not fishing brush piles at the moment, but maybe vertically fishing some fish. Maybe some fish he pulled from his last fish catches came off the brush pile. He just dropped straight down under his trolling motor. He might even be fishing like a bridge or a creek channel bend. But yeah, definitely fishing vertical. I caught my first ever fish on Rayburn with Daryl Gleason. Did you really? I fit, I, we covered a Toledo Bend event. He lives right there at Toledo Bend. I said, hey, I got like half a day. You want to go to Rayburn? And uh, he took me to Rayburn. I caught my first one on a chatterbait, and I was all happy. I was <laughs> like, hey, we're good. I'm good now. <laughs> Check Sam Rayburn off my list. So he's one of your favorites. So, I, hey, yeah. hey I'm, I'm waiting to see the... I'm waiting to see the spot pop up. Maybe he's fishing it this week, I don't know. We were a little shallower than he's fishing now. Yeah. <laughs> Different time of year, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's a cool memory, Daryl. A great angler, a great human as well. Got to make the classic. He won an open not far from here at Toledo Bend, his home home lake. He does spend a lot of time at Rayburn, but far more at Toledo. To win an open on your home lake, to make the classic has to feel amazing. To have the opportunity to maybe do it twice in two years in a row, 
That's yeah. got to be something special. Yeah, that would be very special for him. You know, and, and he's giving it his all out there, as you can see. He's uh, he's definitely taking his time in his current spot. Looks like he's uh, found something he's liked either on the graph or it's got a place that's got a lot of history for him. And you know better than anybody else probably if you rotate brush piles and don't catch fish, don't catch fish, don't catch fish, and then you find one and you're catching them, even if they're small, you, you maybe burn it down today and try to catch as many as you can. Maybe there's a four pounder in there, maybe there's, you can cull out all your one and a halfs with two and a halfs, you know, yeah, something, yeah. but while they're biting there, I maybe try to catch them as many as you can. You know, and a lot of it, it's, it builds up his confidence too, you know, and, and it gets that, that limited in, in the box, and then he probably is going to switch techniques. I think, you know, you're going to see him a lot more football jig and uh, put the drop shot down, trying to catch those bigger three to five pound fish. Guys like him and Josh Douglas both mentioned that 1.30 and 3 o'clock seem to be some, some key important windows for them. That, so it's not always that morning bite. You know, maybe it's that usually the pressure changes or something. Yeah, there's a couple different bite windows, though. Yeah, you know, structure is usually first thing in the morning, and then you've got a couple good feeding opportunities later in the day. One good thing about it is if you don't capitalize in the morning, you guess wrong, go to the wrong brush pile. Once you make that rotation throughout the day, when you get to your last hour or two of fishing, you kind of know, okay, there's about five places I've caught fish. Instead of running all of them, let me run back through them, and then you end up catching maybe a giant that, mm -hmm. that pulled up because, because you cleared off some of the smaller fish. Now it's his brush pile to own or her brush pile to own. Yeah. It's, it's their territory now. Well, and a lot of times, too, you can come back two or three hours later if someone else hasn't been there. And, and, and you know, the first cast a lot of times is the, is the best fish. So you might start at one, um, work it in the morning, then come back one, two o'clock. You know, one of your, your prime brush piles is produced for you all week. Um, one guy I want to mention, Brian Schott, started the day in, uh, I believe, fourth place. Started the day in fourth place, yes. And he is has an interesting story, Brian. He used to fish all the all the big tournaments around Texas, a lot of team tournaments, really competitive guy in this region. He lives more, uh, I believe, in the Longview neck of the woods, you know, the mm -hmm. north north part of, uh, of Rayburn and, you know, in between Rayburn and Fork. And Brian said that he got out of the team tournaments about a year or two ago because his son is to the age they start fishing together now. So they fish some tournaments, father-son tournaments and whatnot. And he said this was his first great chance to wet his whistle of competitive tournaments again. And uh, I said, well, you might be wetting your whistle a little bit more <laughs> sitting in contention to win this thing. Yeah, definitely if he wins, that's going to change a lot, don't you think? I said, I think his son is going to love bass fishing a lot more. more yeah, yeah. That's a pretty cool story. A lot of guys have done that. You know, we know a, a Rick Morris fishes the elites. Mm -hmm. He took some time off when his mm -hmm. when his kids went to college, got them all situated, and then came back and made the elites again. You know, and your hat's off to someone that's that dedicated to their their, their family and their kids. You know, that's the way it should be. And uh, you know, when he comes back, look at him. He's he's in contention to win. It's got to feel good about that. Yep. And even guys like Shane Campbell, sixth place. He's from, I believe it's called Brookfield, which is the uh, southeast part of Rayburn. He's a local here and he's like, man, because of COVID, I was signed up for all the opens. And because of COVID, I decided to drop out of the first open at the Arkansas River. And I still decided to fish this one. And now I have a chance to win this one. And now I'm regretting dropping out because if I win, I can't go to the Bassmaster Classic. But he said, this is definitely lit a fire that now he'll be, he'll be back he'll next sign year. up for yeah, yeah. next year. Yeah. Maybe get some seed money today. For yeah, that, maybe a few new sponsors or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But that's, you know, we talk about the Elite Series with the competition level there. It doesn't get any easier throughout the field. The, the odds of making the top 40 are still just as hard as they've ever been. But then you go to the Opens level, and the Opens is a combination of the top Bassmaster Elite Series pros that, that like to still travel and fish as many tournaments as possible. You've got FLW Tour pros fishing there as well, and, you, you know, you're trying to make the elites or make the classic, you know, there's, there's different incentives there. And then you have the best of the best opens anglers that just do this every single year. The Josh Douglases, the, the My, Myas, uh, the Ma, Masayuki Matsushita. I messed it up for you the first really time today. Well. I did, I botched that one. Guys like that who travel yeah, yeah, the country yeah, fishing the opens, to... they're very difficult. And then you mix in all the local guys, the yeah. Brian Shots, the Shane Campbells, the Brian Posts, the Albert Collins, there's a Chris Wilson's. There's a couple in the top 12 that are local to this region. 
So it, then it just becomes a who's who best of the best locally, regionally, and nationally at these opens. Yeah, and you know, it, that's what makes the, the competition so tough. And, and then you've got so, so many anglers that are competing at the, you know, at the same time. That really hinders the amount of movement you can do all the different places, you know, so the, you know, the local guys might have more knowledge, but a lot of times you're not able to get on some of those spots due to the fact of the, you know, the 225, 230 oh, yeah. boat field. Um, that's one thing that changes a little bit in the elites. And as you no notice that, you know, there's only 88 of us, so we get to move around a lot more on a big lake like Sam Rayburn. So that makes it a little bit better when you actually figure out that pattern. So some of these guys, you know, really have to, uh, be cautious of what they did the first two days, not not burning too many of their, their, their critical brush piles or offshore structure spots. That's what some of these guys were saying, that a fresh brush pile isn't one that hasn't been hit, it's one that hasn't been hit in the last 30 minutes. Yes, <laughs> that's probably true. I, I see someone leave a brush pile and, and I'm fishing and then uh, no one's been there for a couple minutes. I'm gonna go run over there before someone rolls up. We saw this week it took 27 pounds, six ounces to make the top 40 to get a check here this week, 27.6. Uh, 27, so roughly that heavy 13, you know, light 14 pound day on average got the got the last check spot. Still great for, you know, late August, early oh, September. Yeah. Getting to be one of the toughest times. Yeah. What's crazy is 27.6 got the 40 cut and 27.10 was what Masayuki yeah. Matsushita had on day one, the biggest bag of the tournament. Well, there you go, just take whatever's just, leading. Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, hey, shoot, I made the, I made a check already with oh, yeah, this one bag. I, if I zero tomorrow, I still made a check. I, I think he's a little more driven than that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think he's going for the win here today. Uh, it's during. Looks, Looks like, like he's, he's finally packing up. This yeah. is the first time, really, we've seen today. He's definitely shown patience in that area. For sure. And some of those guys, like we said, are willing to run. The, the Gleasons, the Combs, the Shots, those guys are willing to run 50 spots because they have faith in them. Mm -hmm. When you're someone who's from out of town and you found something good that week, you might just, hey, I need to just keep my bait in the water. I'm going to fish five brush piles or six brush piles. Yeah, you know, I, I find myself at Table Rock or Bull Shoals Lake, I know I run a lot more than places I don't know just because, you know, you have so much confidence in areas and you have so much history and past there. But a lot of times I do better on lakes that I'm really a lot uh, less familiar with because I'll stay in an area and learn all the little small nuances of that, that structure and that area. And uh, you'd be amazed at how many fish you can catch over the course of three or four days in, in, in one area. It's just, um, there's a lot of fish down there and I'm just figuring out different cadences, techniques, uh, different colors to make those fish react. We were watching Josh Douglas earlier when he caught one on a drop shot, he said, "If there's like a bunch of little caves, and I don't know if it was like a hard structure, like a, like a big pipe or, or something else, or if it was a brush pile that just had openings, but he said, if I could get my drop shot to fall in there, yeah. I feel like I can catch one. And that's, like you said, he's from out of town, and he's learning it, and he's yeah. learning the structure, and he knows, okay, I, and if you watch that, fish yesterday for Gleason, he's pulling the football jig through the cover and it looks like he's bowed up like a fish is biting it. And then all of a sudden, right when his rod gets out of the picture, it pops back down because it finally came free and then he reels down and sets the hook and people are like, he had a fish the whole time. No, he was bringing went it over, the, over the, and as soon as it went over the brush, eight pounder bites it. Yeah, you know, that's um, one of the things I've started learning with uh, my, my Garmin Live Scope is you'll, you'll see the way they position differently in the brush. Some days they'll be off to the left or right side. Sometimes, like you were saying there, they'll be in the top or suspended above that brush pile. And uh, I've learned a lot just with uh, watching my electronics and how those fish move around, how they position differently based on the time of day that you'll be, you know, early morning versus afternoon. Um, it, it's pretty interesting how much they actually do move even if they stay within a small area. Shane Campbell started the day in sixth place just outside of our coverage map. He's a local though and I talked to him and he was really in depth about it. He said a lot of my stuff's been 20 to 25 feet deep, but my brush is 10, eight to 10 feet tall. So it's in 20 feet deep, 10 feet tall, and so there's only 10 feet of water above that. And he said the fish You're have been suspended. above it. They've been above it, so they're not deep they're over deep water, but they're relatively shallow. So a lot of his, a lot of his baits have been different because he doesn't have to drag the bottom with it. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he can he can clip them above the brush or 
when he does work his bait through the top of the brush, as soon as it get up, gets up there and you're going to let it fall, it that's doesn't when, fall. <laughs> that's when they bite it. It doesn't fall, yeah. yeah. They're just swimming around everywhere. Have you seen anyone use a jerk bait if they're suspended in the top? I have not, not today. And I know that was a thing Kelly J was doing mm -hmm. well with it at Texas Fest a few years ago with a jerk bait catching doubles and whatnot. Well, you know, you just think with the way you were explaining that, if they're suspended 10 feet down, would be one of those things. You know, and th this late in the year, they just might not be aggressive enough to, to really want to chase a lot of things because most of the guys you see definitely, you know, soaking that bait in the brush. Fishing seen, pretty slow. We have seen, I don't, I can't tell what Keith Combs is using. I assume it's not a spinning rod. <laughs> I think it's still we, a bait caster. We've got three <laughs> drop shotters right now, and, uh, and Keith Combs just set the hook with a football jig in a big way. Uh -huh. Oh. oh, what happened? Did he? Oh. That's what a couple guys mentioned on the phone. Oh, he broke off. He did. Digging. All in the brush. Broken shit. You know, and unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. If you're oh, on yeah. the, the back side and you set the hook, not so good. You're on the front side or at the top, a lot easier to get those fish out. That's the th if you're not getting stuck, you're not in the right spot. Just like right. with a lay down, if you don't if you don't if picture the heart close. of it, yeah. you know, like that's what I'll never forget this. When I was a kid growing up watching Bassmaster TV, Charlie Hartley said it at the Classic at Hartwell in 2008. He said, if you worry about getting stuck, you're never going to get the bite. You pitch in there, whether it's a dock, all in the metal, or a brush pile, pitch in there and try to get a bite, and then worry about getting them out. If you worry about getting stuck, you're probably not going to get a bite. Yeah, that's you'd, so rather, you'd rather yep. go get a bite and then have to fight to get them out than and not get a bite did. at all. Yep. And that's the way you've always got to look at things. You know, it's what am I going to do when you get it? You know, when you get the bite, you got to get the bite before you can really can care about what happens, you know, after that. Because, you know, you, you just don't never know unless you put it in there if you can get him out or not. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. There are those lost fish, like Combs said right there, or like Douglas with the eight-pounder yesterday that got his line stuck in the brush pile. Those are ones that are going to be stories. They're going to hurt your feelings, but it's the ones that you get out of the brush and get to the boat and lose at your hand that really hurt you. And, and Douglas had a four-plus pounder do that. Yesterday, he, he touched it twice, and he said, if you don't touch a fish when they jump at the boat, or if you touch it, you got to land it. And he touched it yesterday and did not, <laughs> did and did not get it. it, and it finally came off. Yeah, I think I would rather not get them close to the boat. You know, exactly. Keith's deal, I, I, I can accept that sometimes. It just happens. But when you get them out of all the brush and next to the boat, you should try and, you know, you should put them in. But, you know, we just came from up north where those smallmouth are just so hard to control with spinning equipment. And, uh, you know, it's it's amazing. The, the more time you take with them, the more you land. It's, a, it's one of those things. As soon as I start hurrying them, break them off, lose them at the boat. And that's one of the things I found with getting those fish close to the boat. You just got to be patient. If you're just joining us and wondering who these voices are, Ronnie Moore here, uh, host of Bassmaster Live, my, and my guests today. We've got two different guests showing up. We have Brian Snowden, Elite Series Pro, on camera with us right now. We will have Chad Morgan Taylor in just a little bit. And Brian, you've got experience on Rayburn. Has it been a good track record for you here? I feel like you're a patient offshore <laughs> fisherman, but also it doesn't always translate based on what time of year we come. You know, unfortunately, uh, Toledo Bend, I've had great success on that lake, and Sam Rayburn, I have not. So. For two lakes to be so close, they fish totally different. Um, they just they just don't act the same to me. And uh, Sam Rayburn has not been kind to Brian. Um, it's, it's been one of the, the ones I, I uh, love going there. I like to fish there. I've had some great practices. But uh, when it comes to tournament time, always a little difficult. I remember last year before the schedule came out, everyone was saying, I wonder if Texas Fest is going to be back at Rayburn. Because it's been a few years. I thought it was. And then I, everybody was guessing that. And it wasn't, but we had a Bassmaster Open there. And it's been a long time since we had a Bassmaster Open here. We've obviously had some Texas Fest events as well. And we've had college events. I've, I've covered college yeah. events here at Rayburn. But like you said, Rayburn's one of those jewels, one of those gyms, not only in Texas, but the country. I mean, to put out 27, three different 27 pound bags this week with 88 to 89, 90 degree water temperatures, bright sun, no wind. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> that, that's, that's really definitely good. impressive, you know, and, and it's still got good quality grass. It's, it's got a huge, large fish population with, you know, seven to nine pounders, as we saw during the weigh-ins. Um, so it's just a fantastic place to fish, but it's also an exciting place to, to be able to do something like this where you can watch these guys and know that one bite 
one cast could change the outcome of this whole thing. One cast will change the outcome of this deal. We've seen a nine pound, 12 ouncer get caught this week. Albert Collins with the big bass of the tournament. There's gonna be some more big bass caught today. We got some oh. Masayuki oh. Matsushita. There, I killed it right there. Right? You, I killed you it. Killed it. Yep. With this six pounder earlier, the biggest one we've seen on camera today, and he started the day one pound and change out of the lead. The day one leader fell back to second yesterday, and he is looking to take home not only a win here at Sam Rayburn, but a Bassmaster Classic berth. Points towards the Elite Series. Money in your pocket and a trophy on your shelf. There's a lot more to come. Join us just a few minutes. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll bring you back with the 12 final day anglers and 12 co-anglers on Sam Rayburn today. The BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Opens. Hey, you're going to join us for this last 15, 20 minutes of the live? Oh, you betcha. Awesome. Join us just after this commercial break. We'll be right back with action from Sam Rayburn and Bassmaster Live. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome back into the final day coverage of the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. This is just our third open of the year. And the next open on the docket, Lake Hartwell. In roughly about 10 days or so, those guys will get fired up for official practice. September 23rd through the 25th, we will bring you final day coverage there. I'm super excited about that one. That's from my neck of the woods and Great sell coverage on Lake Hartwell. We, we should see yeah. all five. It's much more manageable than maybe Sam Rayburn. If someone peeks around the wrong corner, you lose them. But Brian Snowden joining us for this last 20 minute push of the first three hour segment. Been, a, been kind of as expected on Rayburn. Big ones, but a lot of small ones mixed in. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's been a grind. You know, you, we've been watching them today, and it's, it's just not fast and furious by any means. But, uh, you know, I think the guy that grinds it out and gets that rotation right and finds the right brush piles in 15 to 20 feet is going to be the guy that brings home the win today. Josh Douglas yesterday had some fireworks on the last stop of the day, caught a six pounder before coming away, and that was crucial to him being in third place coming into the final day. He's caught some fish today on a drop shot. He's something he's very comfortable with, not only smallmouth fishing, but largemouth fishing. Chad Morgan Taylor off, uh, off our set over here said that Josh has a lot of experience here fishing the Sealy's Big Bass, the pro side of it, um, not even that big at which all. is normally this time of the year. You are not the one. We see not why with 27 pound bags and some nine pounders and yeah. double digits getting caught in, in practice. <laughs> That's exactly so Josh how Douglas, went down yesterday. A couple in like the boat. In the same. A couple in the boat for Douglas and Keith Combs, one to keep our eyes on. Fifth place coming in the final day. The Elite Series Pro, two-time champion, knows a lot about Rayburn, right, Yeah, Brian? he lives real close to where he's fishing right now. He's been using a football jig. We've seen him crank some. Haven't seen a spinning oh, rod from him. Nice. Don't know if we will. I don't know if he even okay. wants to win with a spinning rod. Uh, he knows plenty of spots on this lake that he can power fish his way to the top. And he's had a pretty solid two days of competition. 19-5 and 21-6, so he's been Pretty keeping it honest uh, with a 20 pound average. Daryl Gleason, our day two leader, had 27 pounds on day two. He's caught some fish today on a drop shot. His co anglers put some in the boat with a drop shot. Half the time I think they're at Table Rock with much drop shot. Right? Exactly. You know, on uh, Sam Rayburn. I wouldn't have expected that. From morning dawn, morning dawn from up north to Table yeah, Rock to down go. south, it yeah. works everywhere. It works and that's everywhere, what a lot of these yeah. guys have been drop shot in that color. Brush piles have been a main uh, structure that these guys have been focused on. And Gleason is getting his day started with some of those fish. We showed off his big one from yesterday and we'll do that again throughout the show. Masayuki Matsushita, I killed it that time. He started the morning very strong, three pounder. And then he uh, had a little bit of a lull, but then he caught this one and Brian, this is when we came back from technical difficulties. We got to see this giant. Yeah, and this definitely makes up for the slow start, you know, and, and he's got some quality fish. Uh, yes. 
You yes. haven't seen him though lately. Catch another one, yes. have we? Yeah, he, he primarily <laughs> sat on the same spot for a good while this morning. Didn't jump around like a lot of other guys did, bye, bye, but he bye. finally pulled the troll motor up, left, and went somewhere else. Saw him catch this one as well. Mm -hmm. That one, you can see it got stuck in the brush as he, yeah, after he set the hook. Through, yeah. Spotted bass. <laughs> The that was the last keeper I think I, I saw him catch. So he's got three. Three fish for Masayuki. He had 27 pounds, 10 ounces on day one, 15, five on day two. You know, you might see a little more of the drop shotting today just because of the fact that, you know, just because it's Saturday, a lot more boat traffic running around. Um, you know, might have those fish a little less, you know, a little. A little more locked into that brush and a little less re reluctant to bite. You know, it just seems like a lot of times on the weekend that pressure, just the boats being out and people fishing, um, tends to slow that bite down some. And a lot of those fish, you know, it, Brian, with that high sun, not a bunch of wind. They do have a little bit more wind today than the last two days. Will sometimes push those fish to the center of the brush, which makes it a deal like we saw Keith in the last segment. Combs hooked up and broke his line, ended up breaking yeah. off the fish. We know Josh Douglas yesterday, he said he went all the way up. He's been fishing 50 to 100 feet away from his brush piles. He went within 20 feet of it, pitched his drop shot out to the center of it, hooked an eight pounder, it came up and jumped. His line was stuck in the brush and it ended up breaking off uh, there. Always so that guy. high that guy. sun uh -huh. might put those fish right at the base of some of these brush. So you can't easily get them. You have to really work for it. Right, and then, you know, and if you do get the bite, it's so, so difficult to get it out through all that brush. But, you know, that's one thing that fishing pressure and boat traffic, uh -huh. lack of wind, all that causes them to, to really stay tight to that brush. We're bringing you live pictures, video from the top five anglers after day two of competition. That was Daryl Gleason, Masayuki Matsushita, Josh Douglas, Brian Schott, and Keith Combs. Four or three of those five have a shot at a classic berth. Combs and Shot have not fished the first uh -huh. open. You have to fish all four opens in the division uh, to make the classic if you win um, one. Maybe. I wonder what Keith's thinking right now. He's uh, definitely, looks like he's, I think he's considering moving or is he just working on his line up there? I know he trolled away. There was another well, boat was in the two, background that probably messed up his line up. One of them might be gone. He's looking for something though. There he's getting ready. A lot of these guys mentioned they might have 50 brush piles, but it's not yeah. half a Fair mile away, way. two miles away. They, they might be within trolling distance. You just got yeah. one here, one here, one here, and then you can pick up and actually make a move. Yeah, you know, because it, a lot of these are long, you know, points or drops or ridges that, that you know, there's, there's several brush piles that, you know, when I've been down there, you know, the, the ridge might be five or 600 yards long and there might be 10 brush piles scattered throughout that whole area. Which you have to give them all a shot because they're all in the same depth range. If yeah. one holds fish and then all of a sudden it doesn't, they might have literally swam to another brush pile based on... Yeah. Uh, I'm looking, Josh. I think he found one of those brush piles. I wonder if he... He had a fish yeah, on Yeah, if he still has it on. Oh, you know, and that just... Yes. The worst feeling in the world is when you can feel him moving and tightening up that line, but you can't get him to come forward. Oh, he... Is he going to get him? I think he got him. It's I want to know like if he got those out are... of it and then it got hooked in another piece of yeah. it. I want to know, you know, is the, are those his floaties that he's using for marker buoys? Still on there? What's what's behind him? See that in the water? I don't, I don't, I don't know what they are. With today's technology and GPS, I don't know if he's there if he would need them or if those are, you know, catfish yeah, might floats be. or yeah, it might be a good old Texas buoy. Whatever, <laughs> I you think know? it's a <laughs> Texas buoy there. <laughs> he's just marking whatever's there. It's it's the it's letting you know there's brush there, and Josh uh -huh. obviously knows that because he's hung up. It. <laughs> he's definitely taking his time here, trying to work that fish loose. You see, he's positioned the boat where he's got a different angle on it now.
Oh. He, he, he's bringing he the brush can see, Yeah, he can see the fish. That was amazing. It's not a bad one. No, that was worth the TV, though. Not that big, but better than, probably doubles his weight. Good job. That was not terrible. Better than not getting him. <laughs> Better than not getting him. Amen to that. Oh, you know, if you break him off, he's always full. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least a seven. Yeah. Let's see if we can hear a weight on that. Two and a quarter. Six Got about six pounds, he That's said, the live said, well yes, right yeah. now. So he's definitely got a lot of room to move Yeah, up. he probably wants to add about 20 pounds to that. <laughs> I would think so. We all have stories if you fish long enough with being impatient or breaking off brush fish. And I didn't know this, but the opportunity to fish in the college classic bracket, you know, they have that every year. One representative gets to make the classic. My final year fishing, Broke off our final keeper with 20 minutes left in a brush pile. I was trying to rush it and keep get him out of there before he got stuck, stuck. Ended up sawing the line, broke it off. Me and my partner missed the classic, uh, cla the classic bracket berth by less than three pounds. And it was, I mean, it, it came up and jumped. It was at least a three to four pounder. And I got impatient and broke it off. And we didn't bring, we didn't catch a fifth. I said, we're well, going to catch a fifth. Don't worry. We didn't catch a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I got this job right here. <laughs> well, that's not all bad. No, it's not, not bad at all. Well, and you saw how patient he was. I was, exactly. I was pretty impressed. And, you know? and I want to know his line set up there. Yeah, what, what it, size it was? You know, yeah. it might not be a six, eight pound leader like we see on really clear fisheries. This is, Maybe you can catch 10 12. pounders. He might have 12 pound fluoro going to 15 pound braid or something like yeah. that. That would be definitely interesting because he, uh, he worked it through there. And it didn't, I mean, it was almost a minute, I would say, wouldn't you? Oh, at least, yes. Yeah. And then he had enough time to go from below it up above, above it, it to get that angle yeah. change, like you said, and then the fish came out. Looks like Keith's calling was that one, doesn't it? Yeah, in the back of the boat, this will be... Maybe not. Number no. 27 for him. <laughs> he has had a good day from the back <laughs> of the boat. I think they're moving. Keith making a move. He'll find a good rotation. We saw it at Lake Fork when we thought he was dead in the water on camera. The final hour, he ends up coming in, and we're like, man, we're going to have him on camera again tomorrow. And so yeah. he, he's one of those guys that, like you said, it only takes him 15 minutes. It's amazing, you know, and, and he's just he's so dedicated to it. He just keeps pushing it and pushing it, and uh, he knows eventually he's going to run into that active feeding school. And, and that's one of those guys that's always dangerous because uh, he can put a lot of weight in the boat really quick. Josh Douglas, it says seventh place, 41.15. He hasn't updated his bass track yet, but with six pounds and change, roughly, he'll be around 48 pounds and change. That'll have him in fifth place in our top five still, within two pounds of the lead. It's been, to be honest, it's been a little bit of a slow morning mm -hmm. for yeah, a lot definitely. of these guys, but they're still getting situated. And like we said, it hasn't been fast and furious. It's been, you pull up to that right brush pile, and the one that did you right yesterday might yield nothing today, and the one that you didn't catch a fish off of yesterday, it has the five right ones that you need. And it's getting to be, you know, a little later in the day. They should really be locking into that brush. And, uh, you know, a lot of the guys were saying that they were catching them later in the day. So, you know, it's, you're going to see a lot of changes, still plenty of time, and you're going to see a lot of changes in the next two or three hours. I'm excited to see Masayuki Matsushita's game plan. You know, I could make it easier and just pick his first or last name, but I'm just going to go both of them from now on. Just I'm going to say the whole full name, make myself you're, say You're it. very impressive with your <laughs> ability to pronounce his name. You should have seen how many times I said it in the mirror last night. Oh, did you no, practice? <laughs> if you're just joining us for our final day coverage of the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Opens, the live coverage provided by Nationwide this week. It's been great having these anglers on camera.
our top five, and we have to be boat to boat because we have co-anglers fishing the final day for prize money and opportunities as well. They're they're making their claim, whether they're local or whether they're a young angler, they get the chance to maybe get some money to maybe move up to the pro side in the next couple of years. We know a lot of people have different journeys and different paths to getting to the front of the boat, and we're seeing some of the, the best co-anglers of the week managing it, and that's difficult. You've been a pro that has had co-anglers on the Elite Series and in the Open level. And I've been Those on the guys, back of the boat. And they, I, I you got to switch it up yeah. each day. You don't know what your you don't know what your boater's going to do. You don't know what to prepare for, and so it's it's very good for these twelve to make it to the day. Oh yeah, you know it's it, it's a lot about what they're doing and being able to do something just a little bit different. You know, when I was in the back of the boat going through college and working my way up uh, as a as an angler, it was a good learning tool. Um, I, I really enjoyed that, just being in the back of the boat and getting to see what the guys do different and their and their thought process. You know, when they move, when they stay, and what they do. And uh, I always just packed a few of a little bit of everything, and I didn't mind if uh, I had to babysit a big bag on the floor all the time because I just was going to bring what I wanted no matter what. Let's go, let's go, let's go. For a guy who gets paired up with maybe a Keith Combs, you know he's probably not going to throw a drop shot out there, so you might want to bring one mm -hmm. because even though you want to power fish with him, you're not going to out power fish Keith Combs from no, the back no. of the boat. So if you throw a drop shot, you might get a couple more bites to help your three fish limit, which is different. These guys aren't competing against each other from the front and the back of the boat. They are divvying up fish, but five fish limit for the boaters, three fish limit for the co-anglers. And they're all fighting, you know, against other anglers in other boats, yeah, not, not each other. Yeah. yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's one of the best things is, uh, is to, to watch what they're doing and always try and vary it a little bit. You know, either if they're throwing a football jig, uh, a Texas rig, you know, 10-inch old monster zoom worm, something different, drop shot. You know, uh, if they're cranking, you might try a, a, a jerk bait or, you know, something that's just different color. Um, sometimes that works a lot. Um, swim bait. A lot of times, you know. Uh, if I'm even if I'm in a team term, you know, one guy will be throwing a deep diving crankbait, the other one will be throwing a, a, a uh, you know, like a five-inch Zoom Z swimmer on a three-quarter ounce head, and uh, you figure out what they like. And sometimes it, it helps, you know, even when you're in the front of the boat, they start catching fish on one certain technique, you know. You guys, it. you get to put the pi pieces, pieces to the puzzle together for right, sure. Right. Right. You, you hear the boaters doing that. They're sitting there fishing for a classic berth, and they're they're obviously found these fish. They found these spots, and they're like, "What'd you catch that on? Yeah. Oh, green pumpkin, purple. Okay, yeah. you know, and like just a little bit of notes. Maybe there's an adjustment. Maybe there's this or that. Plus, when you see these guys, they're obviously pulling up to a specific brush pile. But like you said, there's there could be some in the region as well. There could be a drop, and the co angler who casts off the back of the boat gets to fish the drop, not mm -hmm. the brush pile, and and tells the pro something that that might not know, you know, they just, they all can learn together out there, yeah. which is great. I mean, it's like a free guide trip as well. You get well, to really yeah, learn, it's a good really learning learn. lesson yep. with yep. some of these and best some pros. some of the best people on that lake, you know, some of the, the local people that have spent years and years to learn that, and that's one of the things that, you know, I gained was a lot of experience when I moved from California to Missouri, fishing with the club and then in the back of the boat. Got to learn a lot of different techniques that we never used in California. You have a uh, interesting story moving from California to go to. You said, "Hey, I'm gonna." There's one big tackle retailer. I don't know if you've heard of it, but Bass Pro Shops. They <laughs> opened up a big one in Springfield, and you moved from California to to go to college there and work there, and then also gave you fishing opportunities. It, it did, and you know, and it, it was one of those plans that uh, it, it worked out great, uh, better than expected. Most of my plans, you know, sometimes they go a little <laughs> south on me, but. At the time, there was only one Bass Pro Shops. Now there's a couple in California, yeah. and, and so uh, it would have been a little different. I, I might have stayed out there a little longer, but it was uh, it was one of those things. I thought, well, you know, you're young, you, you got a couple more years of college. Let's go out there, see what it's all about. And I, I just fell in love with the area. Uh, Miss my family. You know, a lot of family still out there uh, in California. Uh, my parents still live out there, and. Uh, so I kind of missed, you know, I wish Bass would go out there a little maybe, bit. Yeah, maybe we'll do another West Coast swing. I always enjoy it when we go out there. Uh, they still have some of the best fishing in the nation. It's just a long drive. What would be your, if you if you had to pick three West Western lakes, let's just say three, because we've done two in the past. If you could pick three Western lakes to have maybe three tournaments in four weeks for the elites, where would you want us to go? Uh, I would, it would still be Northern, but it would be uh, Clear Lake, you've got to go there. California Delta, of course, and then Don Pedro. Don Pedro, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. It's a fantastic fishery, big enough, um, but it's, it's different than the other ones. More of a canyon style, clear water, um, but it's got a lot of big fish. Well, you mentioned it, one of the guys who's one to watch this week, Keith Here Combs, we hooked up live right now. Oh, 
Not a bad That's one. That's a better quality fish. And what did he catch it on? A big crankbait. <laughs> I mean, and it, I don't think he owns another color other than <laughs> chartreuse blueback. I don't know if he does, if he owns another color. I've actually seen him with a few different oh, okay, colors. Okay. Yeah. But he sure likes that. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to see how many he has though. Maybe maybe like 250 of that one, and maybe like 250 other colors combined. Combined, yeah. probably. <laughs> We've seen some action. It's getting fired up. The first half of Sam Rayburn's final day is in the books. These guys are still putting together, piecing together the puzzle like we just mentioned, putting together a limit, whether they're surviving with a drop shot, whether they're sticking to their guns and power fishing a big crankbait or a big jig. The guys are making it happen, and 27-plus pound bags are out there on Sam Rayburn. Brian Snowden, thanks for joining us. We're going to have you and Chad Morgan Taylor back and forth on live in the last three hours. Make sure you come back and join us at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be here on Bassmaster.com. We'll watch the last three hours go down on camera before we ship it off the way and to see who gets crowned the champion. We'll be back less than an hour. Bassmaster.com. And we're out here having a tough day, man, tough day. But uh, yesterday at this time, I had about the same weight. And, uh, and I made three critical stops and, and caught you know, two great big ones and two other really good ones. So we're still feeling good about everything. It's uh, it's just honestly just been a dang, a blast just being out here today. We still got, you know, 15 boats watching us. I've never had anybody follow me around and watch me fish and all that stuff. And it's just, all that's really cool. I would love to give them one to scream about though. So it's been real slow. Jig bite hasn't been as good today. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's just all the pressure. We've beat on a lot of these piles, and there's a little extra pressure today, people fishing on the lake and stuff, and so can't get around to everywhere today, and so we're just trying to make it happen. I just need uh, a little more magic like I've had every day. He's not big, but he's cute as a bug right now. Last three hours game plan is probably going to go down with my football jig in my hand. I felt like every day, like the late bite, was my best opportunity to catch a real big one. So I'm, I'm probably gonna try to run some fresher type piles that hadn't been beat to death. And uh, you know, just try to catch one or two by surprise. I just had one right there, bite it. But just trying to catch them by surprise, it's hard because all these piles are getting beat up. So many people out here fishing, both competitive, you know, competitors in our tournament and other guys have tournaments and stuff like that. It's, it's Saturday at Rayburn, so there's a lot of people fishing. So. Uh, but I'm going to go down with, with my jig, probably most likely. Um, might make a stop or two and look at some keeper areas and see if I could get rid of my little smallest one maybe. But, but honestly think, as hard as it was to get in a position with a chance to win, that uh, you know, I'm going to go down swinging with what I... This is my dream scenario when I saw this tournament, was for it to be tough fishing and uh, sunny and slick and me have a jig in my hand out here fishing offshore. And so, you know, I'm gonna probably go down with it and see if it works out for me. And if it doesn't, uh, man, it's been a blast this week. Either way. He mentioned it, we saw it. He's been throwing a drop shot all morning and now he's gonna switch to his football jig and keep that What's in that? his hand now that he has a limit. He's been throwing a three yeah, quarter ounce. Like, shout out to all my sponsors um, for all our support. But uh, the tackle at it guys have been great to me. They're, they're located up here at Rayburn and uh, cool little tackle store and, and VNM, VNM Baits has really got me through this week and Falcon Rods. Um, obviously I wouldn't be out here doing the opens if it wasn't for all the support from, from Toyota and Yamaha, Carhartt and then you know huge thanks too to my title sponsor Foster Fence, Trent Holloway with those guys. It's changed my life when he stepped into my life and you know decided to give me a chance to, uh, to pursue this full time. So. Uh, Walker Toyota, Alexandria, Louisiana, great dealership, and I'm sure I'm probably leaving somebody out, and if I am, I hope they forgive me. I'm, my wife tells me I'm a softie, so it's, it's real hard for me to focus and fish without letting it all out right now, so we're going to bottle it up for two and a half more hours, three hours, and then uh, see where we end up. And I am very grateful all these people have been out here watching. It's just, they have no idea what that means to me. It's really cool. I don't know of all the years I've worked with Bassmasters, this is the seventh season of seeing tournaments. 
if I've seen that many people following somebody on the final day of a Bassmaster Open. We see a flotilla like this on the Elites or a Classic. <laughs> For him to be the local, one of the local maybe heroes. That one's fishing, a he's not far. I mean, that's Castle attack, Boykin man. right there. That is, he is right there at the top of the lake. But that's got to mean something to have a lot of followers out there. Yeah. It does. It, 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 it fuels the fire. It's just the spotted bass or something small, you know? What, it, it solidifies everything what, that he's done need, up to this point. Any of them it does. right now, it touches He's got it, a so. ton. He's got, even though he's maybe headed into his second You're classic, killing me, possibly, Eric. if he can win this thing, and then fishes the final event. Get my mind open. going. But he's got a lot of emotions he's controlling right now. It's, yeah, uh, cause so it, like what I mentioned yet, a second ago is yesterday, I only had eight or nine pounds at like about probably 12, 1230. Trying and to go down with that jig. And I stopped on a, a spot and I caught two, three and a half pounders and went to another spot and caught an 813 and then ran back up here and hit a spot and I caught a 97. And so if it wasn't for those, I'd be at the golf course today probably. So that's what's special about Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, these big fish areas is just any moment couple cracks of the rod and, and you just change everything so I've had three fish over eight pounds this week and it's very hard to rely on those those kind of fish but those are the bites I'm hunting for so you know like you just stay upbeat and keep fishing it hadn't been the greatest of days yet but you know it is what it is I feel like I'm doing the right things to win and so you just stick with it and the good Lord wants you to have your opportunity you'll get it you just got to capitalize on it but we're going to give it all we got all the way till 245, any stop, even right by the ramp. We could stop somewhere and catch two or three great big ones and be right where we need to be. Tell Ronnie Moore if I pull this off, I'm going to pinch his little dimples. <laughs> give him a little sugar. <laughs> Dave Mercer is probably the one that's scared of most everybody because I threatened... Uh, I threatened for like six months to kiss him on the classic stage. So he got lucky I didn't do all that wonderful and he didn't get any sugars, but just uh, can't say what it would mean to make something happen the last couple hours and, and to get that chance. So we'll give it all we got. Well, I, would, I wouldn't mind. I mean, if he pinched my, pinched my dimples, you know. Yeah. Oh, does he? I'll run my fingers through his sweet hair too. <laughs> Oh and watch out. <laughs> Daryl's a good guy and a good friend. I actually I told Brian this in the first three hours. I caught my first ever fish on Sam Rayburn with Daryl. We, we did a tournament coverage at Toledo Bend. He was free for half we a day. I was need, free. Uh, and I said, will you take me to Rayburn and we'll go fish for a little bit. Those we did. ponies I've been getting every day. Also, kudos to him. He sent me that, them, that GoPro clip Feels like of a that real big tough one. Day. Oh, absolutely. You just don't know what the other competitor is doing. They may be... They may be slamming them, but it, it sure feels like a tough day in this boat, so. Yeah, it is amazing. I, I think five or six of the top 12 has been in here at some point, so. And a lot of guys that ended up not making the final day, if someone could have had, if there could have just been two or three of us up here, there's no telling what kind of weight we could have caught. It's very, very tough fishing, but there happens to be some good ones in the area, so. But yeah, we've been seeing a lot of competitors running around. A lot of people around the area. There actually hadn't been too many locals fishing today on spots. I just, I have one key area that someone's kind of set on, but, uh, you know, chances are they, there's a lot of good locals fish here, and so they come out here and found these fish on their own. It ain't one of those, those negative deals or anything, but. But these Rayburn bass are smart. They know when it's a Saturday. Several club derbies, some high school stuff going on today. And... But look, it's the weekend in East Texas. People want to fish. I don't blame them. What I was trying to say before all the dimple pinching and all the rubbing through my hair that Gleason's threatening over here, he's using a three-quarter ounce V&M football jig in Gleason's candy. It's his own color that he loves for this part of the country. Pairing it up with a V&M Bates J bug on the back in that same color. It's it's just, I mean, it, it mimics a bluegill very well. It looks great in that, and that's probably what a lot of the forage might be around those brush piles. When I move, I'm going like right over there, like quarter mile. I 
I think you really hit on something really, um, really important there, Ronnie, because at this time of the year, especially back home, you will you will see a lot of bluegill that they've moved out, they've, they're done spawning and everything. They're out there in that deeper water and they get around brush. And um, it's just like whenever they're up on the bank spawning, you know, anything that you use that kind of mimics that color or is in that same color class, um, a lot of times in, in that, that's the range. Roller, right? They can't, uh, they can't tell the difference. And whenever you get it just right, when everything lines up, the stars and the moon and everything goes, and you make that right cast or the right drag or... Y'all try to stop short of me if y'all can. You mentioned how a lot of the anglers have <clears throat> gotten bites whenever the jig has... Ken said he'll slap you around if you don't. ...deflected, popped, or moved over a branch or in the brush pile. And that's what's happening is. A lot of times the fish are right there with it, but it's done finally done something different and they react to it. We're out with Josh Douglas live. Oh, that's brush. Ah, come here, sliding backwards. No, oh, she's there. She's there. Wow. Where uh, are you? Oh, boy. Where are you? Oh, my God, it's way out there. It ain't that big. <laughs> I knew I had a bite. I'll keep though, it makes five. That's number five. Wish I could not have keyed another one up on that swim bait, Ronnie. And if you look at it now, the Bass Track leaderboard has updated, and Mr. Josh Douglas. That's 14, right? Sitting on top of the leaderboard right now. He had four for 13 and three quarters right there. And then that fifth keeper, I mean, that's another two pounder probably. He'll be up around 15 pounds. Not a great bag but it's got him situated. He's got a limit now. Well, he's got room to upgrade. He's not sitting on, you know, the best bag that he could possibly catch today. He's been pretty consistent over the final two day. And we obviously know that there are big fish out there. Everyone's in play this week, even the even down in 12th place, Jason Christie. He was only nine pounds and change back. That's the size of the big bass this week with 30 pound bags swimming around. It's a possibility for anyone to be uh, to have a comeback and win. So Douglas started the day in third, has a pretty solid day. He's got a two pound lead right now on Bass Track unofficially. <laughs> He's sitting in a good position, but Daryl Gleason, like we mentioned, he only has a limit for about eight pounds. Yes, maybe he They're all like this size. If he can get two, He's not big, maybe three bites with that right jig, now? it can go from eight pound limit to 18 pound limit, just like that. Game changer. Yep, and leaderboard changer. Exactly. He's going to have to manage it, though. He does have a big flotilla of boats, and that'll that'll impact how you pull up on a brush pile and how you fish it, correct, Chad? That impacts a lot of things that if you haven't experienced that before, uh, you just don't have the, the noise, yeah. the uh, the confinement, the, the angles. I'm it so changes. Happy to have him right now. It changes it all. Thank you, dude. And uh, you kind of have to start. If you'll see, he's now wow. starting to think about that because he asked him to stop short he's going to have to control that crowd he's got to put them where he wants it or he's got to use his we mentioned him and josh douglas those are two guys who have fished the opens for a long time and had really close encounters to the elite series bids yeah. and also classic opportunities douglas started his morning with a drop shot picked it up much sooner than anybody else in our field uh, he's been using that with a big worm and a jig mostly, but then when he's out, before he gets to the brush, he throws a swim bait or a crankbait. She's out, she's out. We'll be able to show that. that but big. he has fought a couple fish, not only out of the brush, but through brush. He has hooked them, got stuck, and been able to play with them. We saw him messing with a brush pile for two, three minutes and was able to get a fish out. To fit now, hey, we would have said it's only a two pounder. Why are you taking so <laughs> much time? Exactly even that big. Because he now has a limit. That is important. If he would have done that, he still would be short of a limit. Josh is such a well-rounded angler because of where he lives up in Minnesota and fishing Mille Lacs. He fishes this stuff every day. He fishes one rock, one hard spot, one little brush pile. That's why he's so good. That's why he's here, and he feels comfortable no matter what size fish he's catching with a spinning rod in his hand. And he's showing his versatility here. He can change it up immediately. With all that forward-facing sonar, the, the Lorance Live Sight, the Garmin Panoptics, he's using Lorance Live Sight and was able to see the brush pile way out in front of the boat, see how they're reacting, and be able to throw a swim bait before he gets up there. And it yields a seven and a half pounder. Huh? Yes! I told you I got bit right here, dude. I got it. Wow. Yeah! 
Where are you? Oh my God, it's way This up fish, there. he actually set the hook, <laughs> thought it was brush, kind of gave a it a little bit of slack, and then it, it fought back, and he said, no, it, it is a bite. Oh, Swings that in, that's spot. his limit fish. Now we're up to 15 pounds and change on Bash Track, and he is about two pounds ahead of Chris Wilson. We, we mentioned his name earlier, better keep an eye on him. Second place right now. He's one of those Texas anglers that's from that region of Sam Rayburn. Josh is obviously fishing a little bit shallower brush right here. As you can see, he's not only looking at his electronics, but he he made a, a short pitch. So my guess is it's not super deep where he's at right now. You may not be seeing it, but it looks like I believe we have a limit for Keith Combs. It'll update in just a minute, but about a 13 pound limit for Keith Combs. That'll put him in that third place position. Going to be really interesting to see now how these guys that are up there in the top three or four positions, whether they start really moving a lot to try to cover as many structures as they can before the end of the day to see if they can catch one of those fresh ones or if they lock down and just completely saturate an area. If they've got an area that's got a lot of cover in it, like Gleason said, he's got an area that he really likes. It's got a lot of cover in it. I suspect he's going to stay in that area, just fish different structures within that area because he believes that there is a good chance a big one could turn up somewhere in there. He's just got to hit the right spot at the right time. Now, the interesting part is is he going to change his presentations or is he going to change baits in it all? It didn't sound like he was. Yeah, he said he was going to stick with that jig now that he has a limit. He even did. Small. And it'll be interesting to see if it pays off. It has for the last couple of days. It's a different day today, though. It is. As it we is can a Saturday see. on Rayburn. We know on Elite Series competitions, four day events, that Saturday always seems to be the down day. If we're going to have a tougher day, day three always is. There's a lot more people out there. Uh, weather systems coming through, different things impacting it. And today, if it is tougher, there's nothing saying that it's going to be there. Obviously, we have eight hours to fish. It doesn't matter if you catch 20 in the first hour or the last hour, as long as you have 20. We have a couple anglers approaching that. Douglas mentioned to me he started, he, he got here this weekend, you know, or last weekend, you know, mm -hmm. that Saturday, Sunday time frame, time frame started practice. Fished two days, two days of grass, shallow grass, and he said it was work. And not just like, oh, it was, it was, I caught some fish, it was tough. It was work to get five keeper bites out of grass. He said the water kept dropping, so he decided to just graph brush. And he said that his shallower brush, maybe seven to nine feet, have yielded his three biggest fish of the week. But There's most of his fish have came from deeper, but his three biggest have been that shallower brush. Do you think it's those <laughs> same fish that were in grass pulling off with the, with the falling water slightly? More than likely. They probably didn't even check up on a grass edge because the water was falling. They probably yeah, swam right on out to them brush piles and they're going to check yeah, up there for a little bit good. before they decide what's going to happen or see where the water levels are going to go. Um, but something else that's probably happening with those shallower brush piles would be my guess. Not only are you catching some of those fish that were scattered out in the grass, because obviously that was pretty much the case and usually is in the fall at Rayburn. They'll, they'll be areas, but there won't be large groups of fish in any grass beds for the most part. You might catch two or three in one area and you might go down another 50, 100 yards and catch another one. When those fish start bailing out of there, you know, and come off that grass edge, when, as such as they have in this falling water conditions, they want to stop on that first thing. But those are the brush piles that get overlooked because they're the hardest to find. Most of the other guys can graph and see things on their electronics a lot easier whenever they're in that 15 to 25 foot range because you just have a bigger path that you're looking at. Those 9 to 12 foot brush piles are a little more isolated. Was that 114 inches, that last one you And they get passed up, so he, uh, he, he kind of has something special going there for yeah. sure. We got a four box. It's great. Late, late in the day at Rayburn, we got a four box here. Daryl Gleason top left, Josh Douglas top right. You got it. You got it. Masayuki Matsushiba bottom left, and Brian shot on the bottom right. Oh, there, I got it. I just was a little tongue tied there for a second. Unofficial top 10 right now. Josh Douglas, it has updated. I promised it would, and it did. 
57 pounds, two ounces unofficially right now for Douglas on top of the leaderboard. Chris Wilson right behind him. Daryl Gleason filling his limit, but needs big ones. Keith Combs will update with his limit momentarily. That's your unofficial top 10. We'll be right back after a short commercial break for the rest of the coverage on Sam Rayburn, final day action. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Power Pole. Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need the Tacoma. There's a way to the top. Bass Nation. The dream was to fish the Bassmaster Classic. Started fishing ponds with my grandpa when I was young. Here I am now, third year on the Elite Series. There's no way I would be living my dream. There's no way I would be fishing the Elite Tour. For a lot of the guys that work and the weekend guys, that's your only route. Without Bass Nation, I wouldn't be here today. Find a club near you at Bassmaster.com slash nation. Bass Nation, let me hear Want to know the difference between power bait and other soft plastics? Ask the fish. Berkeley scientists have thousands of flavors tested on thousands of fish. Natural, man-made, every bait that's ever hit the water. No matter the shape, size, or color, power bait is the only one that is scientifically proven. Fish bite and will not let go. is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. Hey Bass members, Dale Jr. here. As an avid outdoorsman, it is great to see that Nationwide supports conservation efforts to preserve fisheries and waterways. Did you know that you can get a special discount on auto, boat insurance, and more with Nationwide? Call this number or go to nationwide.com forward slash bass to learn more. Nationwide is on your side.
If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. On the water, every second counts. So when there's a fish at 3 o'clock, be right on time with Mega 360 Imaging. Every sweep of our newest technology offers 125 feet of absolute clarity all around your boat so you can see fish and every detail in every direction. With a clearer picture of what's below, you can catch fish like clockwork. Mega 360 Imaging, only from Humminbird. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Amazing. Nothing better. It flat out allows me to catch more fish. Power steering and spot lock have revolutionized what we're doing on the lake now. Faster response times when, when steering. A spot lock. Man, it's second to none. Game changer. A game changer. Game changer. Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Mega. Sign up now for the Toyota Fishing with Champion Ooh. sweepstakes to win a fishing trip with a Team Toyota Pro, a trip to the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, and a fishing prize pack. Total value $21,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast, easy, and who knows, you could win. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. For over 70 years and 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards, Skeeter continues to set the standard. And now, through October 19th, you can fall into savings with rebates of up to $1,500 on the FXR Limited, up to $2,500 on the FXR Apex, and double rebates of up to $3,000 on the ZX250. Fall into savings now through October 19th. Visit your local dealer or SkeeterBoats.com and fall into savings on the Skeeter boat of your dreams. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome back. Final day coverage of the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Opens at Sam Rayburn. Jasper, Texas is the host. Thank you for joining us for the live coverage brought to you by Nationwide. That's our unofficial top 10 right there. Josh Douglas, Chris Wilson, Keith Combs jumping into third place. Daryl Gleason, Masayuki Matsushita in fifth place right there. It's still tight. The opportunity to move, a lot of these guys still have to grow. They have seven, eight, nine, ten pounds. A couple guys with 15 plus pounds, and that is the that is the weight that is the minimum. And we went from Josh Douglas having just a small, small bag to being a contender to win and in the lead with this single fish, Chad. This is what Sam Rayburn's about right here. 
God, it's these the bites day. that'll make the, the difference the best, on the any best. day, but today specifically oh, on boy. a tough day. Look at the size of that one. Oh boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes! Huh? Yes! I told you I got bit right here, dude, and I got her. Wow. Yeah! Yeah. Seven and a That's half right pounder. He, he put it on the scale. They were guessing seven, seven and a half, and they were right on the right on the money. Big fish of the day we've seen from any angler and. That's the reason he is on top of the leaderboard. We mentioned it. A lot of these guys who have had that that difference from 18 to 20 to the 24 to 27. You got to have two, maybe three of those. He already has one. Uh, it's only one more swing of the swing of the hook set to be able to get another one. And whereas other guys are still catching pound and a half to two and a half pounders. Absolutely. You know, jo Josh is such a well-rounded angler. He he knows what he's doing. He's got the ability to keep it together during this time frame. He's a high intense intensity angler anyway, but he really, really is good with electronics. He's good with the spinning rod as well as Eat power it, fishing bro. baits. Eat it. I need you. He's talking to him. Yeah, he is. He must be in the heart of a brush pile right now as Masayuki makes a move. Brian shot in the bottom of your screen. Josh Douglas at the top. Keith Combs. It's so hard not to think that he's going to run into a, a feeding school on a brush pile and just with the style of fishing he's known for and the baits that he's using today, when he gets a bite, they're going to be good ones. Yeah, and you know the thing about Keith? You know what he does on his off day? He goes out to Rayburn and he graphs. <laughs> See, he knows that lake so well. He lives there, obviously, um, has so many different spots. And, you know, sometimes that can be a hindrance, just having too many areas to go to. But Keith, he knows that he's going to continue to power fish this with his crankbait and with the jig more than likely. Um, those are the two baits that's going to produce and have produced pretty much the bigger bites. So he's going to, he's definitely could be a, a threat you, going You said forward. the other side over there is just not as good? No, don't do freaking that. Yeah. Yeah. My brush piles are. Well, you're looking at it right now. Three of the top six anglers in our leaderboard right now did not fish the first Bassmaster Open of the Central, so no classic spot to them, which you and Brian Snowden Studio will be happy because that adds a spot to the Elite Series uh, <laughs> Angler of the Year, whoever, <laughs> to make the classic. Yeah, but Josh Douglas, Daryl Gleason, Masayuki, Matsushita, those three in our top six right now are all gunning for a classic spot. Be big for every single one of those anglers. I mean, never, a classic berth can never be taken for granted. You never know if you'll get a chance at them again. No, and, he, and you cherish each and every one of them, that's for sure. I mean, that's, you got to get there to be able to capture that title, to have a chance of taking it home. You got to get there first. And it's uh, definitely. It's, it's, it's an achievement, to say the least, and, and um, it's exciting, and it's a long road. Definitely a career career maker for some people. I'm going back to where I first started, and we're going back. Hey, I mean, just imagine punching your ticket to an event that if you won, you could be set for life in bass fishing and be able to do what you love you know, for a, for a career. And that's yes. what some of these guys are fighting for, well, that financial stability. Doing, Lights back on. And and it puts weight to your name, you it, know? Uh, you could be Chad Morgan Taylor Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, or you could be Chad really. Morgan Taylor, uh, you know, Bassmaster Classic competitor. Absolutely. And the earlier you get it in your career, the, ch the better chance you have of having a long-standing career at the, at the top level, such as the Elite Series. You just, it's, you know, I've talked to Josh a lot over the years. And, um, you know, I, I just can't, I can't fathom. Joss has said to talented angler that I can't fathom that he hasn't already qualified for the elites. And we talk about this occasionally, and he'll tell me, you know, he's like, 
I seem to always just stumble on one, and that's how hard the road is. If you stumble just a little bit, even though most of these, a lot of these anglers are very consistent, and they're certainly talented enough to compete at the Elite Series level, but just to have a flawless I know, I season know, to see that. that puts you into the Elite Series category is hard. And there's been many years where for Douglas, he's been three to five spots outside or, you know, back when they used to accept invites and if someone said no, they just worked down to, to make sure all five spots were filled for each division. Uh, he would be like this, the first person before him would accept and he wouldn't be able to get that thing, so. 12.20 right now, basically. So two hours and 20 minutes. Probably 20-ish minutes to run back, 25. So, we got two hours to run around, flail around. And we are trying right now with everything we got to make it happen, so. Fishing a couple places I got bit on yesterday and then we, we might, uh, I might just start hitting some I hadn't got bit on, just run some fresh brush piles. Hope, uh, hope I hit one by surprise and they don't know what's up. Probably gotta get rid of everyone in the box still to, uh, to have a chance to win. But anything can happen. The unknowns that are out there that goes with decision making when it comes to this game is beyond belief. And you can hear these guys when they're talking to themselves and to us and kind of trying to help 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 understand what we go through whenever we're on the water like this. It's uh it's hard. It it is definitely hard to uh make it. You know, you're asking yourself, should I stick with what's gotten me my three or four big bites over the last couple of days and got me here? Should I move around a little bit? Should I try some new stuff? And um, as you can see. Daryl is asking himself those questions on a fairly frequent basis right now. I will have to say I am really, really impressed with how these guys are fishing very composed right now. Two hours left in the event, a lot on the line. They know they're, they they don't know where they're at in the standings, but they know that they are probably one of the three or four that's actually got a legitimate shot. Every time I get that, that, in that brush pile, you just anticipate that bite. It's the closest you can be to success in the farthest away, in. only being three to five minutes, you know, or three to five casts from making it happen. You know, that's that's all it takes, three to five casts. But then those three to five casts never come. And you have and no idea what happened. This, like. this sport is like none you've ever seen before, simply because we've seen. You, you mentioned that Josh had lost a giant, and he lost a four pounder that he touched. Those are game changers, even in this event. He would have sewn this thing up had those two fish been landed. So it's a it's a game of highs and lows, and they happen within a split second. You hook an eight pounder, you're probably the happiest guy in the entire world until you get him to the boat and he comes off, and then you could possibly be the lowest man in the world at that point in time just because that fish got away. And boy, that's the guys that can bounce out of that uh, and bounce back are the ones that typically tend to really strive in in this sport because you've got to shake that. You got to get that out of your head and go on. There's nothing you can do about what is in the past at that point, other than try not to make a mistake if you've made one or change a piece of equipment that caused that issue to arrive. That's it. And these guys are really fishing composed. They feel like they're sticking to their guns. Now I noticed that Scott is fishing a grass line now. Yeah, Brian, He and that's what I was just pulling up some notes from last night. He said he wasn't really, wasn't really dialed in to one thing or another. He wasn't going to just stick out deep. He wasn't going to go shallow. He was going to maybe fish some grass. He was going to switch it up in the morning and see what it told him. He didn't really have that great of a morning, so now he's exploring some of those grass lines. And it, you can get right in the in the perfect grass mat at Rayburn just as quick as you can at a brush pile. Yeah, the I right mean, the right five casts in a in a grass mat can yield three or four of the quality bites you need. Absolutely. I mean, he's got some pretty good territory going on there. It looks like a lot of high drill out there. I mean, just because the water's dropped a little bit doesn't mean it means they were scattered out before. Yes, and maybe the, the lot, the majority of them have moved to those offshore brush piles, but that doesn't mean that there still couldn't be a couple of giants up there. And if you make the right pitch, I don't know, I've based a lot of my career on that. Just, just trying to, you know, put the bait 
in front of one of those big bites, but it's it's one of those places that are just less pressured. As um, Daryl mentioned earlier, there's a lot of pressure on Rayburn today because it's a Saturday, a lot of other events going on. And there's systems within the nation that are just known for that type of fishing. So you go to Sam Rayburn in the summertime, yep. you know that most of the big fish are going to be caught offshore on brush piles. Especially That's in a multi-day -tourna multi tournament, multi-day tournament for exactly. sure. Exactly. And so he who gets in the right rotation has the most brush piles and the best brush piles wins, right? But when you get added pressure, boat pressure, flotillas, other events going on, and now a lot of the anglers with today's technology have found everything that there is to find, even if they can't maximize its potential, they've still been around it, and they've caused the fish to become uh, yeah. a little bit leery. So now you have grass edges that have completely been overlooked. And they're and they're they're fresh. They're rested. Yeah. So when it comes to those brush piles, I want to I want to roll you know an animation and show our viewers what we're talking about with offshore brush piles. If you don't know what Sam Rayburn's about, some of these might be five, ten feet wide, four feet tall. Some of these are 10, 20 feet tall. You know, and they're thirty feet of water. Chad, walk me through this animation. It's gonna it's gonna show us this brush pile and how the fish relate to it. There's a lot of different fish around each brush pile and how some are tucked in and some are on the outskirts. You know, and there's a lot of different conditions that that are variables that change their position. A pressure, sun positioned, wind, lack of wind, cloud cover. You can see the ones that are buried in the brush pile like that, that, that typically happens a lot of times whenever the sun's at its highest point and you have, you know, um, no wind whatsoever, or they've been pressured really hard and they're getting as far into that cover because that's where they feel as safe as possible. It's kind of like riding out a tornado in your home. You get to the in, innermost portion that is the safest. Now here comes the jump bait. Right yeah, so. Jump right there. A couple, there's a couple of different ways to approach it. Some want to go straight to the center of the brush pile and some want to give it a run on the outside like we saw with Douglas with a swim bait, but also a guy like Keith Combs with a crankbait. That's what this whole goal is, to hit those edges before you work to the center of it. Absolutely. That way you got more of a chance of catching them if they're, if they're on top or off to the sides or out in front or back. Depending on the approach, obviously. That's where your different baits and different casts and different anglers will really pay off like it has for Josh. And it's probably going to pay off and has already for Keith. And they're trying different baits, so they're giving the fish a different look. You know, obviously a crankbait has worked at a completely different speed than the jig is. The jig, you throw it closer to the cover, work it a little slower through the cover up and over. Whereas a crankbait, you have the speed, the deflection, and you have more of a reaction type bite that occurs. Now, once you figure that out, and there's a specific rotation with baits when an approach to a brush pile that work best at any given time, and the guys who figure that out and capitalize on it. That's what brush pile fishing's all about right there. And that's one benefit. I mean, a jig is great for maybe lethargic fish, not, not feeding, active feeding fish, but also it does a reaction strike. We saw it in that fish catch of an 8-11 with Daryl Gleason yesterday. We saw it with Josh Douglas even. When you pull it over that limb, because it's primarily weedless and you can fish thicker, the heart of those, as soon as you pull it over a limb, that fish is maybe rising up from the center of the brush pile watching it. And when it's struggling and finally breaks free, they know they have to, they have to get it right then or they're not gonna be able to get it. It's almost like a um, it's almost like a bait fish or uh, other food source fleeing at the last second. It's its last ditch effort, and that's what's causing that reaction bite from that jig that's been pulled up over or worked into that heavy cover. I love those old school animations. I, I grew up with those oh, on Bassmaster yeah. TV. I mean, they explained it so great. Unless you get a, a scuba mask and you swim down and see what a brush pile is, some of those animations are just so explanatory for viewers who who don't fish Sam Rayburn or don't know, maybe they only fish grass and they don't fish wood. They don't see how fish position within it. So you bring up an interesting point. Now with today's electronics that we can look forward and all around while we're actually fishing, like exactly. with Garmin Live Scope and some of the others, what happens is now we have learned so much more about fish reaction and position that it's so obvious you can't ignore it. And it's not an unknown anymore, whereas before the animations is what educated us in Bassmaster Magazine and the television show, and then you put it all together. But then now you really have uh, an interesting perspective and a different, different view, and it is, 
educational, it's justifying, and it's aggravating all three at the same time because <laughs> sometimes you could see him down there. <laughs> my 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 uh, partner there, Brian Snowden, he can attest to that. At Table Rock, we spent several hours in the boat together fishing trees and brush piles, and you're like, well, I can see him down there. Here he comes, and no bite. <laughs> that does teach you, you know, color change up cadence or heavier jig, lighter jig, you know, fall rate, different things, and you get to experiment and see a live result of how they do it. I remember seeing some of that live sonar with uh, a swim bait, watching fish follow it back and see them not yep. commit to it, and then you can now throw a drop shot and catch those same fish, and you're like, why am I not getting a bite? Oh, well, they're following it, and you wouldn't have known it in years past. You can kick, you can kick the swim bait and get him to react to it right at the last second, make a couple quick retrieve changes and, and all of a sudden the bite happens and um, you know when to do it more so now than what we did in the past before we were kind of guessing at it or just trying and then we get a, it's something that, that worked for us for a little while um, and just stick with it. We'll get this one we'll roll, all right? He said we're going to hit this. I, and I mean this four pounder is what I mean. This four pounder. What he did say was I'm going to make you know one more cast and then we're going to roll. No doubt in my mind there's one in there. Just hadn't made it bite today. Brian Schott's got an awesome story. He's on the right. This is his first Bassmaster event since 1997. He said when he was a young man, he gave it a run and traveled the country and did a lot of things. I, I, I noticed the states that were involved. He fished all over the country. Took a break in 97, or after 97 season, fished around Texas, did all that stuff, and basically quit team partner fishing uh, maybe two years ago and started fishing with his son, teaching his son how to fish and getting him involved. And he said, man, I haven't fished team tournaments with high intensity, high competitiveness. I'm going to give it a shot with this open coming up, and, and he's obviously sitting in the top 12. I said, man, your whistle might have been uh, wet just enough to uh, maybe do this next year, maybe do it going forward and get back into it. And he said, well, we'll, we'll play it by ear and see. I know that if he won a trophy today, it probably uh, his son might love bass fishing a little bit more, and I know he'd be a it would be very fulfilling for a local angler to compete at this level. Oh yeah, absolutely. And what you know, what better thing to take a break for is to to spend time with your son and teaching fishing. That's what exactly. this sport's about. And obviously, he has a tremendous amount of skill to pass on and experience to his son. So his son's very lucky that he has a dad that is <laughs> yeah. so talented and well diversed and can obviously still Catch him get the him. job <laughs> yeah. done, right? Hey, when he says, son, I know what I'm doing, his son has to now believe him. So Brian shot one of our top 12 anglers. We've seen a lot of guys out on the water today. Five cameras uh, with the top five guys. We've seen some magic with Josh Douglas, a seven and a half pounder. Gleason has been doing his milk run. Do you think Gleason will get the two or three necessary bites for him to regain that lead? <laughs> it's, it, he's got two hours, ah. like he said. It, that's a tough deal, but like you said, right brush pile the right time and it can work. I like, I, I do like the fact that he has a lot of room to move because of his weight that he currently has and he's still so close. And he knows the area really well, so if he can just do it, I think he can get the job done. We will see, we've got just a few hours left of tournament action. Every single big fish is gonna help. A lot of these guys have now filled their limit and it's time to cull. Like you said, Daryl Gleason, a lot of room to grow with one and a half pounders in his live well. He's looking for those four, five, six pounders to make a big impact on the leaderboard. Keith Combs, one as well. He's got a couple small ones in the live well. Daryl Gleason's looking to regain his lead that he had to start the day. This fish, a seven and a half pounder, has Josh Douglas on the unofficial lead at the top of Bass Track with just an hour and a half or so of fishing left before they run back in. Can it, will it be enough? It's gonna be some fireworks coming up. Also, watch Chris Wilson coming from back in the pack, has a chance, he's within range. We know how Bass Track can be, guys can underestimate fish, they can catch fish at the last second they don't make it on, the, on Bass Track. We will see, but no one's out of it. No one's out of it from the top seven or eight up. Everyone's got a shot, tune in. Right after this commercial break, we'll be right back to see more fireworks on Sam Raver. Live coverage of the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live will return after this short break. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. 
Welcome back, Bassmaster Live. Final day action at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. Jasper, Texas is the host. We're glad to bring you live coverage brought to you by Nationwide. And that's our top 10 right now unofficially. Josh Douglas still on top. Chris Wilson sneaking up from back in the pack into second. Keith Combs filled his limit. 53 pounds, 11 ounces overall. Daryl Gleason still stuck with his small limit. We're watching Douglas right now live on Sam Rayburn. Looks like Josh maybe made another move. It looks like he's throwing something slow, like he's either dragging his football jig or a Carolina rig maybe at this point. I know that's a real effective way to fish around a brush too, obviously. I said, hey, Josh, dial me in on a couple key baits that you've used. And he said, yeah, you know, I've done a few. I've used the, uh, his co hooked up. Got one, bud. Good. You saw him like he's a big one. You sure? Oh, oh no. no. Uh. Was he a helper? Was he a helper? Uh, maybe a, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I asked him, I said, dial me in on a few baits. Just to give me a couple, just a, just a taste of what you're throwing out there. He said, well, I've been throwing a big worm, you know, and then I'll also throw a big jig, and then, you know, I'll crank some, maybe throw a drop shot, you know, throw a swim bait a little bit, Carolina rig sign. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, so you're really keeping everything wide open, and that's what, that's Josh's style, just not letting anything go unchecked and so he's like he's switching right now yeah that's <laughs> that's not a bad way to fish in the fall because they get such a good look at a lot of football jigs and guys get locked into one thing and then and then the next thing you know the time just kind of slips away from you but that's pretty good now on the other hand when you're a guy like on the left side of the screen here keith yeah, combs he's got all the experience in the world that you could possibly want. Not that Josh doesn't, but Keith. I mean, he's so confident with just a couple of baits. Yeah, that, that, that's what makes him dangerous. Exactly, yes. But those baits do different things and operate at different speeds, obviously. And you couple that with the knowledge that he's got and, and all of the different locations that he can fish. And um, I tell you, you can't count him out until the, the the bell rings. Until his floats in the net. That's of the, it. They'll check in. That's it. I mean, he's surprised. cranking now. He's cranking again. I'm surprised we haven't seen someone throw a normal spoon or a, or maybe even a magnum spoon because it, it's not the deepest brush, and you can and with our technology you can see the brush much better, so you know you're not going to get hung up directly casting it. But something like that. But I don't know what size the gizzard shad are right now, what phase they are, if they're out there. You know, why someone hasn't thrown a big spoon? That's a good question. It is challenging in and around brush, but like you said, with today's electronics, you can you can definitely put that into your favor. Now, I'm certain with the depth that they're fishing on these brush piles, they're not the fish are not going to let them get over them. But still, you can make those casts if those fish get on the outside of that at all. Yeah, let that let that spoon come jerk by the side of the brush pile or out, you know, like those fish you set on the way to a brush pile before you get up to it. This would be big. I would, I, I feel like I know Josh pretty well or Daryl pretty well. If, if either one of them won today, I guarantee you there'll be some, some waterworks at some point during the, the process because it, they have, they have calluses on their hands, you know, they're bruised and beaten up from just years and years of, of of high level competition and getting so close. Yeah, no doubt. Douglas is making a run and move now. You know, I don't know Daryl, and I certainly, it's obvious that you and him have a special relationship if he's pinching your dimples and running <laughs> fingers through your hair. But I do know Josh, so I'm assuming Daryl's a, a pretty good guy if you're <laughs> yeah. vouching for him. Um, but um, when Josh, same way, he, he is, uh, he's really put in a lot of time and effort. He's been so close. And uh, I know that uh, this would mean the world to him. And he's one of those anglers that we are talking about, that, that this could be a life, even though Josh fishes for a living, this could be a lot, one of those life altering situations for him to get to go to the class and just to make the classic oh, indoor, yeah. maybe to solidify in the lead yeah. series. Thing. He's one, you know, a lot of guys take a classic berth and, and it's a classic berth. Some guys take advantage of it and make it more than that. There are a couple anglers today that would love to take home the title, not only to prove themselves they can win, 
win at this level, but also the prize money that comes with it and the opportunity for the Classic, the Elite Series points that it provides for you to, to possibly qualify. It's uh, We'll get into the qualification in this last hour and a half of how those guys will do it in the points, but like we said, Daryl Gleason, Having a heck of a week, 17 pounds on day one, 27 pounds on day two. He had that 9-7 and an 8-11 yesterday. Yeah, maybe and he's got a limit for about 8-11 today. You know, that's the, the he's not it was big, easy for him almost to catch right two fish over 8-11. And today, all five of his fish probably weigh around that mark. So one or two key culls, a four or five pounder. It doesn't even have to be that much. It doesn't have to be that much from where he's at in the leaderboard. He's only about five or six pounds off the pace. If he catches two four-pounders, calls out two ones, that's yeah, that's the yeah. six pounds you need. Maybe. Gleason's obviously been wanting to throw a football jig all day, but has been opting for a drop shot early to fill his limit. Now he has put the jig in his hand, and a guy who hasn't put down any of the power fishing stuff. You mentioned it, Chad, a dangerous angler when he's got these two or three baits in his hand, a, a big jig for Keith Combs and a crankbait, his yeah, iconic. Nice. I'm surprised it's not called like Combs nice. Truce or something as the color. Blue back, chartreuse belly. That is Keith Combs' crankbait of choice, and we saw him catch some on it this morning. The punch just came up back there. He so is definitely yeah. talented yeah. with it, that is for sure. Big one. He's the one who's right there nice just one. lingering. Three pounds, seven ounces out of the league right now. With plenty of room to move. Oh, with plenty of room. He's got a two pounder and a one pounder. A guy who has been in contention all week, the day one leader, dropped back to second place yesterday, Masayuki Matsushita. Started with a three pounder early this morning. We got to see that immediately. The first fish of Bassmaster Live. Yeah. Then he went on a lull. He's one of those guys who didn't run around a bunch. He stayed on those certain brush piles that were good to him, and he yielded this six pounder before he made his first move of the day. Yes! 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 He had to have a, a big stream of confidence coming to him, knowing that, you know, knowing that he already has a six pounder in the live well early second fish of the day. But since then, it's just been, he caught a spotted bass right here mm -hmm. out of a brush pile. You can see that one was either on the back side of it or right in the heart of it. And you said his bait, his bait choice has been mixed up a little bit, throwing what looks like to maybe be like a fluke, which I know is great on a Carolina rig, things like that. That was a that was a Texas rig, but different subtle approaches, these changes, whether it's a drop shot, whether it's a different kind of soft plastic are yielding fish on these brush piles. Josh Douglas started this morning with a drop shot. It's becoming pretty apparent that Come today on, is certainly uh, showing that the lake has succumbed to pressure and and the, the weekend. It's just most of the fish catches that we've seen take place has been on finesse tactics, most of them, not all. But, um, and then, you know, obviously, Josh really feeling comfortable with the finesse approach as he always does. Or, I'm sure, like I said, versatile, you're going to see here, you can change it up at the drop of a hat. That's one good thing is fishing a drop shot to get bites is good, but keeping those power fishing baits honest when it's the right time, that can be the game changer. This was one resulted in him. Nothing but one to two pounders in his live well, and then he catches this. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes! He's still hanging on to that one. He's still barely hanging on to the lead unofficially. So I know he'd like to have another one like that. Yes. And really, I told you I got bit right He's gonna there. be strong, God. strong if he gets yeah. one more big bite. What are you? Oh my god, it's way out there. Ain't that big. <laughs> He was hung up in the brush there, set the hook, thought he had a fish, hung up in the brush, and then gave it a little bit of slack, and fish swam out. Out of the game. For a moment there, I thought he did hook brush on the hook set, and the fish ate it off the brush. You never know. He said he felt a bite, but they often do that as well. It's one of those things you see a, a, a jig flying, get stuck into a piece of wood, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I don't have to get off, because the fish bit it right off the, the structure. Yep, a lot of times cranking a crankbait, it gets hung in a brush pile, you're trying to pop it free, and the next thing you know, it's got help. Elite Series Pro Lee Livesey fished this event, had a solid showing um, 
overall this week. Let me see where he finished at, Lee Lucy. Finished 36, got a check. In cut range, top 40, get a check. He said the spoon was definitely a big player. That's how I was catching my big ones out deep off the brush piles. I just never got com comfortable enough to go fish for them. I had two almost nine, uh, two almost nine pounds out deep on a spoon in practice. I didn't want to leave my shallow stuff until I had 17 pounds and I never got to go on, uh, on day two. It just goes to show you, you know, that, that we talked about the spoon earlier. Um, it, it, just like the football it jig, does. it can definitely trigger a bite. It looks like Josh might have had a bite there. He was about to set the hook, it looked like, and back, back off of it. One thing that that tells me, and, and tell me if I'm reading between the lines incorrectly, but it seemed like it was a little easier for Livesey to catch numbers of fish up shallow and he said once he got to 17 pounds, he would go offshore and fish for him, which tells me that maybe it was much tougher offshore. He wasn't getting many bites. So the guys who picked offshore, they better live there all day long because it's not like you can go out there and, and get right in a hurry. You need to have weight and go coal. And that's what it seemed like. He only had 16 and 12 each day, so he didn't get the chance to go spend time out there. Yeah, that's, that's just one of those you know, one of those judgment calls that you've got to make um, depending on how your practice went and your confidence going out. It's hard to switch from, it's hard to leave biting fish to go to something that you, you've spent several hours doing and maybe only had one or two. Yeah, they, they're they bigger, but um, when you set those, when you set those guidelines for yourself, it, a lot of times um, it can be a lot of times it can just be challenging going, getting out of it because you, you're always w wanting to get to that mark. You know, that makes you feel safe. It's just like catching a few before you go ahead and commit to another pattern. It's, uh, and it's one of, those, one of those really difficult decisions to make. I don't know, Keith's co-angler's cranking? Yeah, he's cranking out of the back. Those two guys came into today chasing this man, our day two leader, Daryl Gleason. Hooked up moments ago. He's got, I don't know what I got. I can't catch up to it. He's got five for seven and three quarters in his live well. It's Most good anything will call. Well, he, he, good keeper. I think. <sighs> Get rid of that little one. Acts like he's gonna cull up for a few ounces right here. Couldn't catch up that little sucker, dude. One thing that's different. Well, thank you. He measured almost all of his Never five so keepers. happy to see a little two-pounder in my life. measuring that one, so he knows it's you know it's that's definitely. That's a lot. I've been to a lot of tournaments where I was happy to see a two-pounder. Yeah, he's making a pretty significant call there. I'll, I'll oh, take that trade. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, that was a good, almost a pound call up right there. It looked like. That's another lot. I want to be greedy right now. We'll catch a big one. Thank you. Still fishing really poised. He's doing a good job keeping it together. I think he took second here at Sam Rayburn earlier this year at an FLW, FLW event. Was He may not have been second, but he was in the top five for sure. Had a shot to win. That's where he coined the, coined the phrase, ocean pony. That's what he calls a big one. <laughs> he got to do that on camera just like he did yesterday on the GoPro. Now what does this do? We're watching Keith Combs on the right. We have Gerald Swindle in our top 12 as well from the Elite Series. And then I just mentioned Lee Livesey finished 36th. Lee Livesey's having a tough, tough year, sitting down uh, un unexpectedly in 68th in so points. Back there, Gerald Swindle, 57th in points. And then Keith Combs, 34th in points. Three guys down, you yeah, expect to be within yeah. the classic cut line for sure. And they're, they're one's in, one's out, and one's far away from it having good finishes at the opens level. What does that do for you? Even though it's a different field, no points for your elites. It doesn't help you in there. But to, to remind yourself, you can catch them, get back on track. When we hit Gunnersville for the three-week stretch uh, and start that, 
maybe have a different mindset than getting, you know, coming from the northern swing? Yeah, so there's a couple of things to keep in mind here, and that's a good question. Obviously, um, these guys don't need to prove those, <laughs> th th that they can catch fish. But what happens is you get to questioning the, the, the calls that you're making on the water, and then and, and, and sometimes you way overthink the situation, <laughs> and you start fishing patterns yeah, that, wow. uh, that not, everything not right. only shouldn't be, but aren't. And uh, it's just kind of one of those things where it's hard to get out of that pattern through, sometimes. And like I said, you don't, they don't need to prove anything to anybody. Already, they've, they've already like point, right? very they're much they're probably, substantiated like their presence yes. in this industry and, and um, have been for quite some time. But, you know, you just have, sometimes you have a few off years, but the one thing that all, all three of those guys have in common that you just mentioned, those are largemouth right, fishermen, this way, I think. extreme. Not that they can't do really well on smallmouth, but coming back to their wheelhouse. They're coming back into their wheelhouse. We're going to get into some tournaments, and I'm pretty sure you're going to see, out of a couple of them for sure, you're going to see them move up the leaderboard, not any further down. So, it, but car drive and you can catch a little power now. When you go into a tough tournament with a lot of boats and you catch them and you grab that confidence and then you get into an elite series, the the competition is still extremely difficult. But the field size is smaller. It's half the size. The you don't, you don't have co-anglers in the boat with you. Not that that's good or bad, but it, it just is different. We've only got so, an hour, so I'll yeah. be like just you make decisions cross, differently, you know I mean? like and you're like, ah. and it, it just gives you that maybe that little yeah, boost that you get. Last cast we're gonna go, right? Gleason's planning on making a move. It's some interesting insight. I know that not every single year goes to plan for pros, but we also have to think. Every year we end our season on smallmouth. The points are pretty much solidified. There's a little bit of movement that can be had for the last two or three smallmouth events. Those two, three or two or three smallmouth events happened as event three, four, and five of our season. And we still have half the year left of largemouth. And so instead of already having those points racked up mm -hmm. where you're allowed to struggle, now these guys who are largemouth specialists, like you said, have to really prove it and catch back up a little bit. But they can do it really quick. Oh, absolutely. I think everybody can agree this has been a, uh, let's just put it, interesting year to say the least with everything that's gone on and all of the changes and postponements and the effects and, from COVID and, and all of the restrictions that we've had to abide by um, just to even make place. Looks like Combs is hooked up and it might be Come a decent one. No. Not too far. Long and lean. It's probably not going to Whoa. Happen. Is that a different crankbait color? That is not the chartreuse blue bag. Oh, You're right, Brian. Brian's over here watching off, off camera. He's uh, He does have other colors. He does have other colors. That's the <laughs> one other color he throws. I think he, if I'm remembering, he likes green gizzard as well. That's a solid color all over the country. This might call from him. Like I said, he has a, I think he has a, a limit that has a four, a three, a three, and then a two and a one. So this, depending on how small his one is, it could be like a call that Gleason just did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. For sure. That is literally the definition of a swimmer. Mm-hmm. Must have been a spot. Which is also interesting over the last few years, having spots come into Toledo Bend and Rayburn, that changes the, sh the dynamics of some of these. I could see an eight pounder eating a spotted bass compared to why why feed on a bluegill if you want to eat a 12 inch spot. Yeah, I mean they eat giant crappie all the time. Why wouldn't mm -hmm. they eat a spotted bass too, for sure. You know, a lot of these guys like also, like you one. said, they're really, um, they're really pushing hard, not only for a win in a classic berth here, but the points race is still on, and this will be the second out of three. So it's getting, this jockeying position is getting established, you know, and the cut line is pretty much going to be able to be established point wise to where these guys have a chance and these guys don't. You know, I certainly, uh, I'm not sure how Josh did in the first one. He's actually, I was just pulling it up. 
One thing that's interesting this year, you take the top four qualifiers from the Eastern Division, the top four from the Central, Central. and then top four overall. There are eight Bassmaster Opens, four in each division. And if you fish all of them, you fish both divisions, that ups your odds of making it not only in each division, but overall. And Douglas fishing all eight of them, seventh overall in the points race. Um, and then obviously he'll do just fine um, with this good finish Absolutely. in the Central. So, well, like you said, the only three events under our belts in the Opens, five more left to go this season. I'm excited to continue to bring live coverage to the Opens, see these stories pan out, see those seven and a half pounders for guys like Josh Douglas, see the charisma from guys like Daryl Gleason trying to maximize their opportunity to win events like this. There's your unofficial top 10 right now as we head to a commercial break real quick. Josh Douglas still on top, looking to make another call or two. Chris Wilson right behind him. Keith Combs just made a call. We'll see that update in just a moment. Daryl Gleason rounding out the top four. We'll be right back. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome back to final day coverage. We're winding down the day. It's 2.10 Eastern time. We have an hour and a half of fishing before they check in for weigh-in. You can watch the weigh-in on Bassmaster.com, 3.45 p.m. Eastern time. That's when the first flight checks in. There is only one flight today. You'll be able to watch that all go down. Chris Bowes, the tournament director, will host the weigh-in and crown champions, not only in the pro side, but there is a co-angler division going on right now as well in the backs of the boats. We've seen some co-anglers land some fish this morning that will have them in a good position to win some prize money. As we go through the day's action so far, our day two leader, Daryl Gleason, sitting on top. He had 44 pounds and four ounces after two days of fishing. That was a 17 pound bag and a 27 pound bag. Nothing but small fish so far to him for him today on a spinning rod with a drop shot. Once he got his limit, he said, hey, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my day to a jig. Now I need those crucial bites and that's what he's utilized uh, to cull up each and every day. But today, it's only been a once that he, he has only had one bite on the jig since he's done that. And, and it was after... not the quality nearly of an eight or nine pounder, but more of a two and a half pounder. Right. Chad Morgan Taylor, Elite Series Pro, joining me in studio today, co-hosting the duty, and one of your one of your competitors on the Elite Series, one of the guys who's actually, if he won it today, would add a classic spot to the Elite Series Angler of the Year, Keith Combs, because he didn't fish any of the other opens. Winning today would just prove that, well, everything that we already thought. Keith Combs is very good at Sam Rayburn and very great in Texas. But he is sticking to his guns, Chad, just like you expect. We know him as a great power fisherman, crankbait, big jig, and that's what he's done today. And that's what he's going to end this tournament with. That's what he's done for two days. That's what he's going to do. You don't see a spinning rod, I don't believe it, all on Keith's deck. You probably won't even see one in his boat. But that's what makes him dangerous all the way till the whistle sounds. Like you said, the fob's in the net. Yeah, that's what. That's when he's no longer a threat. But even then, you got to weigh him in. So, and somehow that all rhymed. By the way, I just, I just realized that until the fob's in the net, he's no longer a threat. Okay, Keith Combs. He's got a, a four pounder, some three pounders, and then uh, some two pounders in his live well. He did just make a call when we went to commercial break last time, and so we take it out to him live, and he's in third. His call is not reflected. He should be around 54 and a half pounds, maybe, but he's still in third place behind Chris Wilson and Josh Douglas, our leader. Chad, you got about an hour and a half of fishing left. 20 minutes of that is probably running back at least to take off, so about an hour for most of these guys at, at minimum. What are you looking to achieve in this final hour? Normally when you have 19 flights or 10 flights of boats, you have an advantage. You get to check in later than other people. Today, everyone checks in the same time. You can't gain an advantage by culling late in the day when someone's not fishing. So you know that when you check in, they're all done. What are you doing for this last hour to get your job done? Man, you gotta let it all hang out right now and you gotta cut it to the wire if you think you're close and you got a shot. So you gotta think, okay, the worst I can do is 10th here, and obviously you don't want to check in late, but I mean, you're going to cut it to the last minute and you're putting together your A game plan at this point, and you are 
you are pulling all the tricks out of the hat. You are hitting some of your juice and you're relying on every bit of experience and on the water time that you have to lead you into the as good of a finish as you can possibly have. Now, no matter what happens here today, whoever ends up on top, all these anglers have had a great event. Okay, we can sit here and armchair quarterback this, and this is my first time being able to do this, and it's very interesting. <laughs> we talked about this, of some of the things that you see that is so different that you that you know what they're going through that you get a, you know some of the some of the anglers get into a, a pattern or a vision and that's all they're going to try that's what got them here that's what they're going to take and you're sitting here watching them and say wow i can see why whenever i finish an event you know some of my friends say well why didn't you do this or why didn't you try that or if you just win or why did you decide to do that and um it's interesting to see how that, that information arrives. But these guys have all had great events. Only one person can win this event. That's the sad thing about it. But right now, it looks like it boils down to if anybody had a trick that could put a percentage of catching a large fish higher than, than anything else, they better be doing it right now because for one percent. of those it's going to make the difference for a, every single, of, yeah, all every one of them. them. Yeah. Every one of them. So you got to do it. You got to fish. If it's throwing a big swim bait, if it's trying something different, or if it's sticking with that jig in the brush piles, just do it and know that you've done everything that you can at that point. Josh Douglas, our unofficial leader right now, started the day in third. Very confident. Very confident. Yesterday had a great bag to jump into third. 19 pounds and change after having 24 on day one. But he was so disappointed. He said he could have had a giant day. He had a four pounder in his hand and it came off. Yesterday he lost an eight pounder in a brush pile. It came up to the surface and then went back down and got stuck. You are Today not the one. hasn't hasn't no, messed up. Every fish that's gotten hung in brush that we've seen, he's gotten out, and then he caught that seven and a half pounder that we'll see in just a second. <laughs> that's exactly even that big. It's kind of the way you want your day to go. You would love to catch five big ones to start your day and yeah. be done, but he did. He caught a limit, or he caught he, he caught three or four fish and capped it off with a seven and a half pounder, and then from there made another call. And and he's her, he's still sitting her, at that uneasy spot where he could get caught real easy, but he's also he can close the door real get fast as well. Yeah, one more and he Get will close out. the door to where it's just barely cracked for on, sure. And on, there'll only be there. one or two anglers that can slide in it. God. Yeah, they now, need a six or seven at the last yeah, stop the best, of the day to do best. that. Exactly. Oh boy. Exactly. Oh boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes! Man, I just love what I've seen with how Josh is approaching some of these piles just a little bit differently than some of these other guys. Yes. Um, I told you I got you know, right he here, is, dude, I got her. He, he, he ah. is definitely checking all the boxes. Where fish on the outsides, fish oh on top, gosh, fish on there. swim baits. He, he's, you're not seeing him with a spinning rod at this, mu at this point much anymore. You know, he's throwing bigger baits, it looks like, to try to catch that one. He, he knows. Nope, there he is with a spinning rod right now, so it's interesting. He might be going back to some of those key brush piles that have yielded big fish, and now he realizes that, that he himself, not the lake, not the spec, he himself has put so much pressure on some of these spots that he needs to now adjust and, and come back with. Oh, 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 now, you did say he oh. lost a big one on a spinning come rod on, yesterday, that right? Lot, that took a lot. Don't do this to me. Come on, you got to come out. 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 Come out. Come out. Come out. Come on, please come out. Please come out. Don't do this to me. Come out. Oh, dude, that's a big one, dude. Come out. Please come. Oh, find your way out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. Oh. Are you still there? 
I think it's still there, dude. Come on. She's there. She's still there. Come on. Oh, God. Come on. Find your way out of the brush pile, please. Swim away. Swim out of there. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on, dude. Come on. Come out. Please come out. Come on. Here she comes. No, come on. Come on. Changing angles, hoping. Find your way out. Did it earlier. Did it earlier with a yeah. two on, pounder, on, but this is different. It you know, was pulling drag big time. Come on, girl, you're still there. Come out. Oh. You feel that? Get pissed. Come on. still hear his drag peeling just a little bit like every every so often and I don't know if it's him pulling it or if it's whatever's stuck on the other end of it. He you doesn't know. know where he sits in the leaderboard but that was me quietly trying to take a breath because I've been holding it the whole yeah, time. Exactly. This is crazy. He doesn't know that he's on top. He probably thinks he needs 20 pounds to, to even be close. He thinks he's out of it and so he knows he needs this fish and he hasn't realized the position he's in, that this could be the one, like you said, that could close the door where it's just barely barely cracked. The fact that his I mean, line hasn't broke is, is astounding to me, that he has put that much pressure on it lately. And he's practicing so much patience right now, just hoping. He just went, I think he went back and below it, and now he's over to the side of it just a little bit. Now he's right over top of it. Poke it with his rod. Anything right now. Normally if you pull it like he is straight up and down, when it's stuck in brush, it's gonna break. And so if it's a fish, it's you can probably feel it maybe seesawing back and forth. He hasn't given us any indication that he can still feel her anymore. Mm -hmm. She's still there. She's still there? Yeah. Wow. He, he's going to give the last... Oh, God, she just moved. Where are you? And then you just pray it's a bass. I wish I was legal to go swimming. God. Fuck. Come on. 
These are the highs and lows that we talked about earlier. If he lands this fish, look at her. You can be see her. Best catch of the year. He'll be unbreakable. See? Swim out. There you go. Swim out. I can't get this fish. She's still going. Oh. Oh, come on. She's swimming away. Get out of there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my gosh. No, don't. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Oh, oh you're so close. Don't do that. I got some line back. Did you hear what he said there? Come he got on. sun line back, which means. Some hit, line. Oh, some line. Some line. Some line back. I thought he, he was talking about line. he got his, his fluoro back through his, you know, like that would show that he made some. She goes again. Yeah, if you're just tuning in to Bassmaster Live right now, Josh Douglas, our unofficial leader, Come there. Oh, you're joking. hooked up with this fish and it put him in the brush, took him back under, wrapped him up, and he, uh, we saw it earlier. He fought a two pounder, got it out of the brush, and was able to land it. This one seems much bigger. We haven't got to see it uh, come up and splash yet. He says he still feels it on. He made some progress with it just a moment ago and brought it closer to the top of the brush pile, but it still hung up. This is one that could be the decision maker. Yeah, exactly. He acted like Go when he here. first set Go the hook, way. it was definitely, yeah. definitely the size that he was looking for. It was like when he, when he set the hook, it was going away from him towards the brush when he set the hook. Come out. Yeah. Mm, he is torquing that rod. Yeah. And, that line. Ah. and it's over. That's so frustrating. Ah, I just lost one. I can't even really be mad. It's the spinning rod's my last, my last option. Might as well pull up the troll motor and leave because he just tortured that brush pile enough, like you said, disturbed it, the fish that are there. Uh, and this is where I, he's been putting whatever braid to fluoro combo he's had this week has been fantastic, but just one too many torques on it and it, and it finally gave way. And you want to get out of there before you see it come up and jump and show what it was. You don't want to be there <laughs> and see that. You might as well get out. but. Josh Douglas, that was a make or break moment. Like you said, if he catches that fish, he is bulletproof. He is, he is you know, going to be so confident. But we got to put it in perspective. Still in the lead with an hour left in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's just looking to, to expand that lead, obviously, you know, and to try to try to secure that position. But uh, man, oh man, what a heartbreaker. No matter what, you know, that fish definitely was ones he's keying on and the one he wants to try to catch. There's going to be a couple key fish caught in the last hour of this tournament. Make sure you stick with us. We're going to go to commercial break. We'll be right back and we're going to see it unfold who wins Sam Rayburn. Live coverage of the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live will return after this short break. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Hmm. Here we are, the final day action, final hour action. Sam Rayburn for the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Open. And if you've been following along, Josh Douglas, the man right there, our unofficial leader with just an hour left of action. And he fought this fish for five, six, seven minutes. Spinning rod, the fish got tangled up in brush. He got right over top of it, made progress, put some, put some torque on it, tried a lot of different angles. Finally got a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel that the fish was gonna come out and then it eventually didn't. He put a little too much pressure and right here, broke his line off and did not get that fish in the boat. He had to, had to pull up from there and leave because that brush pile is no longer good to him. But hey, 
You can take those risks. You can make those gambles when you have a seven and a half pounder as your kicker on the final day of competition. In your limit, in this seven and a half pounder, he fought out of the brush earlier, is one that is really helping his cause if he wants to win today's Open and punch his ticket to the Bassmaster Classic. Seven and a half pounder helps the cause, and that's why he is on the unofficial lead on Bass Track by about two pounds, give or take some. He's got about 15 pounds with that seven and a half, so if he can make a call in this last hour, he has a lot of room to grow. He has four for seven and a half, and then you add that seven and a half, and that's how he has 15 pounds. And that is our unofficial leaderboard right there. Josh Douglas, like I said, just a little bit, little bit less than two pound lead over Chris Wilson. Keith Combs is looming behind there. Another pound and a half behind. Daryl Gleason, the day two leader. Small, small limit for him right now. It's been a tough day on here on uh, Sam Rayburn for him. And then Masayuki Matsushita has been at the top of the leaderboard or near it all three days of this event. The day one leader fell to second day two. And now he's in the top five. We welcome in Brian Snowden. We, he joined us in the first three hour segment of Bassmaster Live for the Open at Rayburn. It's been some wild last two hours of action, and you're going to be able to watch the final hour unfold. What do you expect to see? Well, you're going to see some, uh, you know, I think some guys move, hit their most key areas at the last bit to try and catch those big fish. And I'm just real impressed with Josh's patience. I mean, working that fish that long in that brush, uh, amazing. It is. If Josh would have paid off and caught that, it could have been a Sports Center top 10, you know, a highlight moment of his career. But he learned from it, he broke it off, and he moved on, kept his head up. Hey, I'm going to go look for more fish. I, gotta, I still have to get a fish or two. Probably with the weights they've had this week, Douglas has nowhere near what he thinks he needs to win. Right. He doesn't know he's in the unofficial lead right now. And Brian Schott, he is one who's uh, – a local to Rayburn, one of those Texas guys jumping in the open, trying to put his hat in the ring to win, and he's oh, hooked he's up right one. now. Yeah, fell down yeah. to eighth place today from Middle. fourth. Yeah, and he's one of the guys we've seen do actually the most yeah. unique. Yeah. You know, Moving he's for shallow, some, yeah, yeah, grass, grass lines, okay. wood yeah. offshore. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I think he's got a good one. Uh, I don't know. He's crazy, right? He's just crazy. He's just crazy. So he's doing the big fish shuffle. You notice that? <laughs> left, right, left, right. Squat down a little yep. bit, a little more athletic position. Oh, no. Oh, we got him. Nah. Unconventional, but it is boat flipped. And it does count. Oh, I got the color. How about this move? It's, uh, I got a flyer soon. <laughs> This will put him. They're moving him up a lot. And there was four. I think this just uh, this was moments ago when we were starting uh, from commercial break, and this has moved him up to fifth place, 52 pounds. He's in that 52 to 53 range okay. where three or four guys are, so he could be as low as fifth and as high as third. You just don't know. We see a two box there with Daryl Gleason on the left and Keith Combs on the right. And make a few casts and go. We uh, we got an an hour and five minutes, and uh, we are probably 15 get back or so, something like that. But I'm just gonna keep fishing my way back. I'm gonna stop and uh, you know make six, seven casts at a few key piles. That I'm hoping hadn't been beat to death. Everything's been beat up, and you know probably look at my weight yesterday and think I just had a great week and was on them and all that stuff and it just really didn't I've been fortunate to get where I'm at so yeah, you're we're, uh, talking about how tough it really we're just was sticking out with our plan the it's the best thing bites. I know to do to catch some big ones and I'm and now it looks like he, he's talking I'm positive about that's what I need is some great big ones seven so. or eight cast each of his we're just gonna run it all the way back but as he down to an hour and five minutes so something's got to happen pretty quick probably only have time to really hit maybe three or four spots or something and See what happens. That call that we saw him make, that we, you I know, feel, uh, insignificant sorry for fish. One enough, he's crazy enough to bite this jig right Put now. Put it up to nine pounds and change for him, so pretty, uh, it was a step up call for him. Yeah, and this is a, you know, 
brush pile fishing one yeah, on one. You know, the, the some jig's days been my big fish bait. everything works so I right. Three over eight pounds and some days, on it. Uh, you know, you end up with and, and all the solid fish eight or nine, ten pounds. Come and, on it. So you know, I, I believe they're all I only doing got the right one thing because they wouldn't be Yesterday here if they weren't. I had five, exactly. and the day before I had three. So. No, it's a VNM pacemaker football jig, and and we actually have it in, in a color called Gleason's Candy that that I really like, and uh, throwing a little J bug on it, which is a VNM bait also, and it's in a matching color in Gleason's Candy. So it uh it's just my my confidence color, and uh, I kind of knew. After practice, I didn't find anything spectacular that I'd be running around chasing these brush pile fish. And I told my wife if I could weigh in 15 out of the brush, that I may have a chance to do something special. And you know, we just hadn't had enough bites today. I, I probably just didn't have enough of the the key areas and have my timing down just right. And so we fished pretty clean. No uh, no regrets or any of that stuff so far today. So. I'm just gonna try to finish the last hour like I've been doing all week and just try to, it, it's really hard. I'm trying to fish right. a lot of places, but I'm trying to fish them slow. So you go from running 70 miles an hour down the lake and Far? Oh, you jump okay. up and you throw in there and you drag <laughs> as slow as you can. So yeah. really gotta keep your wits about you. And uh, when you do get a bite, especially if it's a good one, you really gotta be on your game to get a good hook set and get them out of that pile. So. But we got an hour left, and then I'm probably gonna play golf for a day or two and chill on the couch. So for the next hour, we're gonna try to uh, just stay focused and cover as much of these piles as we can, see if any, anything magical happens. How's Daryl Gleason broke it down? I mean, from his from his three quarter ounce football jig with a J bug Every on the back. Every time my jig gets in that candy. pile, I'm just waiting for that magic thump. Trying that to fish slow what, while running fast to get to each what spot. What keeps us all fishing. You never know what's going to be on the end of it when you feel that. So I was blessed this week to catch the three great big ones I did and catch two of them like that yesterday. It was just a, you know, it was just miracle fish. Well, he's still got time for a couple so, more miracles, you know? Oh, exactly. Thankful I had them, though, and, and, and had this chance all day today, man. It's been a ball. Even though it don't look like it, I've had a awesome time guys like me don't get this chance very often to uh you know be in a position to to win and make the bass masters classic and so doesn't matter what happens next hour we'll be happy with the results he says that but if he keeps getting in the I top did, 10 man. he's gonna, gonna, he's gonna be there yeah. it, is. Got to, uh, <laughs> it does happen you know, one of one of bass master open on toledo bend uh, on my home lake and it was it was incredible but everything has to go your way and everything went my way that week and this week, most everything went my way, and it got me here. Uh, you know, I think we just kind of ran out of gas so far. So, but we'll see. We still got plenty of time. You know, yesterday I caught, basically in an hour, I caught almost all the fish I weighed in, and it was late in the day. So, there we go. You know, just try to stay positive. Anything can happen. I just got to keep. Yeah, they probably want to check that out because I'm sure if I don't do it. Somebody's gonna probably catch one at the end here. It's gonna really change things for everybody. Uh, there's no reason not to watch it. Over here at Sam Rayburn, anything can happen, so. Yeah, Bassmaster.com, live way in. I believe it's gonna start at three. We're all checking in at 245, so. Yeah, I would tell everybody to tune in, see how it goes. If, uh, if I catch a couple ocean ponies at the end of the day, I'll be ugly crying on stage and won't be ashamed of it a bit. <laughs> I would like to. He said that, you know, we still got time for some miracles. He doesn't need miracles. At this point, I do whatever I it have to do. It only takes one bite on Rayburn. Fish. A seven pounder even, is, is a five pound upgrade for him, you know, and that's, and that's, that's the a lead. Yeah. And it's not out of the question. It's not like someone's at. St. Clair looking for a nine pound smallmouth at the last minute, so you know. Cute. Where it's ounces here, yeah, I mean, exactly. it can happen in, in, in he's pounds like the real version easy. Of like the little Debbie I brand. Think, I think you he's know? talking about me again. I don't know. <laughs> I His wife better lock the door. I'm going to have to mail say. him a selfie or something. <laughs> That's right, boys. Gleason's making a move here. Like he said, again. going to be running 70 miles an hour to Dude, get I'm to his spots. I'm going to run down spots. the shore and just start hitting stuff, okay? 
and then stopping at brush piles, making five, six, seven casts, running five, six, seven casts. Brian shot still fishing. Like we said, an hour until check-in, which means maybe only 40 minutes of fishing, 20 minutes of running, unless you're slowly working your way down the lake where you only have a 10 minute final run to, to take off. And I think that's Happy what several of them are doing. They're heading that way. We're starting to see cameras fall off here and there from running. They're picking up going so quick. Daryl Gleason really wanted to just keep a jig locked in his hand. If, if his perfect day on Rayburn this week would just be five jig fish, and that's what happened yesterday, 27 pounds. Today, uh, one jig fish to call out one of his drop shot fish that he used to uh, fill his limit. He caught five drop shot fish, and then he's called up. That call took him from about seven pounds, 12 ounces, to about nine pounds and change, so a good solid call for him. Yeah, he had the spinning rod out a lot today. And that just shows, he said, man, it's, it's Rayburn, there's pressure. I don't know if I fished out these spots. When a brush pile produces a big fish each day for you, you think maybe one more day, but that could be just yeah, two it's... territorial big ones that are on it. It is a little different for viewers who might not know brush pile fishing. Possibly a little different than a, than a ledge. You know, a, a ledge at Kentucky Lake that you find a school and they're all four pounders, or you find a school and they're all two pounders. Brush piles, they can mix in. They do like to stay the same size though. So that's not a good sign if you're catching small ones. Yeah, and then they will vary to some extent, but a lot of times, um, you know, especially this time of year, they don't seem to reload very well. You know, there's just, uh, you know, one here, one there, and then with the pressure and the weekend, yeah. I think that really slowed the fishing down today. We're, we're about maybe two, three, two, three weeks, maybe a month away from when fish start moving, and that's when you say replenishing. Those fish aren't traveling anywhere to, to move to a different depth because of time of year. They're already where they're gonna be until fall hits. Right. And, in, and if it's still 90 degrees in it's Texas, still it's still status quo for summer. <laughs> yeah, and the, the- Douglas is hooked up. Oh yeah. Uh-oh. Looks like a decent one. This could be the- Oh God, it's a big one. <laughs> Keep coming. Hurt. Oh, that's a big one, dude. Oh my, oh my. Oh, she's not that big, but she's not that small either. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You're not that small. Nice, yeah. nice call. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's gonna make up some more. Dude, the way, the way that one was, oh God, don't move all the way on me. God, you see how I was cutting like that? <laughs> <laughs> that rod was doubled up. I wasn't seeing anything move. I was like, that's a way. Right there. Oh, that's a, one of all the right. top four fish we've seen from all our anglers today. Huh? He has the number oh, one one. Yes. Things had before, huh? Is that on the swim bait again? I don't know if it was uh, while he was reeling or if he was dragging. But he said it was cutting, so maybe when it thumped that swim bait, maybe it, it, it took off, off to one the, way. Yeah, yeah. To the left. Which could yeah, be a good be sign very, to you know, maybe keep it in more. Four pounder. Ooh, four pounder. Four pounder. That's mm. a good call. What's he getting rid of? I think he's got a two. 17 and something. I know, I just got gained two pounds. More than two, he did. probably. Let's see which one. Holy. Oh, yeah. 17 and something. <laughs> which ain't, that ain't 17 even for folks watching at home. 17 something ain't 17 even. That is. That is above 17. Exactly. And he had 15 three, so that is a two plus pound uh -oh. call. That is impressive. The door is barely cracked now. I'm gonna throw my oh, I'm crazy in there one time. And one thing, hey, we got to point it out. One thing that's important is uh, fish health. And, and with the hot water temperatures, if you get stuck with a small fish, that you might be. not be able to cull your smallest because you can't throw back a dead one in Bassmaster tournaments. You can't, you know, you got you you to weigh that one. Yeah, you cannot cull a dead fish. So if, let's just say, Douglas's smallest one wasn't doing well and wasn't, wasn't alive, that he can only call his next smallest one, so it's less of an impact. And that, that's a possibility. I don't know. We, we heard when we were when the camera switched over, he kind of seemed disgruntled and, and something was wrong. And I don't yeah. know if it's um, I swear my we'll have to get my pull on my three sixty is rotated it's off just a degree or two. Yeah, maybe not. 
Never good when it's off a little bit. No, no, no. <laughs> Until you hit that cover and you're like, oh, no, no, there's no, the cover. It, I, I, there's the cover. <laughs> it's close. It's pretty close to the boat. It's pretty close to the boat. I mean, I'm way in it right there. I promise that one more time we're going. Kind of stuff they can get on. And I will say, we mentioned that, fish care. Douglas brought in one that was deceased yesterday. He checked in early, but one had passed away. And it was a four ounce, four ounce penalty, mm -hmm. but also you can't get rid of it. And so yesterday he made a call with a six pounder at the end of the day, instead of getting rid of a two and a quarter, he had to get rid of two and three quarter. Ooh. So that's half I've pound that he didn't get, you know. Clip every right. one would of those have big fish like increased. That. And then uh, today, if that's the case as well, those are just ounces that you can't get back. Something okay. to think about, but it's a part of the sports, part of the game. And most people, you know, they take tremendous care of their fish with ice. Ice is, and, yes. You know, and, and uh, you know, if you need to fizz them because of that, because of that penalty, you know, it really matters a lot. And not to, not to chill the water for people who are like, oh, just throw ice in there. Not to chill it to 75 but no. to keep it from rising to 93, 94, you keep it at similar water that they would have came from. If you catch them in 30 feet of water and the water temp on the surface is 88, it's probably maybe 80 down there or it's a little less. Usually um, it's about and, five and degrees yes, from the and, surface temperature. And so that's what you're wanting. You're wanting to keep that water temperature uh, to what they came from, what they, mm -hmm. what they were living in. Because they're obviously healthy enough and fine enough to live in that on their own. So in the live well, they want to be that same water temperature. Right. So it's good to have a little handy. Do you have a floating thermometer or anything that you just have sitting in there that kind of tells you? Uh, you can have a, we have a mounted from our units. Oh, okay, on the yep. Graph. yep. They have a little sensor, just like the ones on the outside of the boat. It's also important to recirculate and pump in fresh water every now and then, maybe pump in fresh water, put ice, cool that down, mm -hmm. and then whenever the ice is fully melted, maybe you pump in a little bit more fresh water and keep it, keep it, I guess, equilibrium, keep it that normal instead so it doesn't get too cold or too hot. And when you're using ice, you just don't want to pump in a lot of lake water, you know. Recirculate usually always on high, uh, oxygenators if you have them, and then just fill the water as needed. That coal has Josh at 17 and three quarters, figuring out bass track today. But what's crazy, and I'm just gonna say this, Albert Collins is a guy who is known across the country at being a great Sam Rayburn angler. I know, I know Albert, he's old school. He's probably not gonna put in bass track numbers. He's gonna let the scales <laughs> tell it. He's down in 11th place, 34-11 for two days. He's 23-9 behind. 23-9 is just a normal bag on Rayburn. So you just never know, a lot of guys still in the game, even ones that aren't on bass track. Jason Christie's just below him, 24 pounds behind even, you know, 24 even. And they have not entered it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's gonna be a really fun way in. But right there, we could have just witnessed the fish that the fish that won did, yep. not only an event, a classic birth, uh, a paycheck, points towards the elites. elites. I mean, it's everything Josh has been wanting exactly, and working for. Exactly, everything he's been so close to before. Like I mentioned, he's got six top twenties in the opens. Amazing. And the opens is a combination of the top elite series pros that decide to fish more tournaments in their year, so they fish the opens. You've got the top opens pros that are traveling rooting and trying to make the elite series you've got other touring pros and then you have the best locals that are going to jump in and throw their hat in the ring on there so you literally have a combination of the best of the best and that's exactly um, what we have even if you don't know the, yeah even if you don't know their name yep. you don't, you might not know brian shot you might not know shane campbell people who fish rayburn know those know names. those names and they're definitely pleased to see them fishing this tournament on saturday and not the local tournament they might have, <laughs> might have launched as well I think Keith's due for a good one. I know, it's been a little while. He's back to a spot that he's been at uh, this morning. He's really leaned on this spot. I can, you can obviously yeah, tell, tell with the, what, the way the water is. You can see it's low and it's, it's got a main tree and bush area off the end of that point, but then there's that little, bit of that little peninsula, well, be, yeah, yeah, the saddle. That's a perfect word for it, yeah, saddle. Probably got a drain, I would assume, coming out of there, a little depression. I think it's called a creek channel across the whole country, except in Texas, and it's called a drain, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think that's because of the grass. I don't, I don't know, they <laughs> always refer to it as, as a drain. That region of where these guys are is, 
Some of it's right there where Castle Boykin is, the boat ramp, but also some is if you're on the other side of the lake, that same region, that other side, is called the canyons. Mm -hmm. the canyons. And, it's, and it's because there are a ton of drains that form islands that form, you know, that just all filter in those channels together, a bunch of uh, contour changes, right. and a lot right. of those guys have been concentrating in that area. Yeah, you've got, got a lot of good areas for spawning, and the fish just move right out to, like, like we say, those drains and depressions and humps. And uh, the locals have put a lot of brush in there as well. So. Yes. And you can see the water line Tell you what, when you're on the bushes. Here I don't again, know if that's the normal this, water line. I've caught three bass in a row. Or, or when that, that, that bait hits the spring. bottom, they'll hit it, tunk. And then I start reeling it, and I'm three for three. So just remember that one. I know I will. I don't know why they don't eat it on the fall, but they hit it. You must be throwing a swim bait again. Mm. If I caught a seven and a half pounder on championship Saturday, I would probably. Do yeah, that. especially <laughs> now after you got the four. Yeah, exactly. And in the heat of the summer, people might be like, well, that's just a lucky bite. When you have a seven and a half and a four, and that 11 and a half pounds makes up your 17 pounds. That's not luck, oh, that's just nature of summertime fishing on these lakes. Yeah, you're gonna get a big water. bite, and you're gonna just do your best to make your other four as good right. as they can be. You know, and, and at home it's more of a, a four and a five pound size, but it's always the person that has one or two of those that wins the events. And that's what you're seeing right here. He's got a seven and a half and a four. And the other ones are still quality, not, you know, nothing, nothing too small. And uh, he's still got room one more four pounder. Move him up another two pounds, or almost two pounds, pound and three quarters. With 220 plus boats, the first two days of competition, we narrowed it down to the top 12, and they're competing, fishing a lot of spots. You just think about it. Maybe these guys haven't had a lot of pressure today from competitors or anglers or, or random fishermen out there, but 220 boats fishing, you, you know that there's a good number of them that have probably fished some of these spots and have just at least been around, like, like you said earlier, maybe not maximized it, but, but fished it. At least they were present there. Oh yeah, well, you know, the, with the electronics that everyone has nowadays, it's, it's almost impossible and the, and the mapping is so good on our units that, that a lot of people fish these kind of places and they look for the same kind of structure. So I don't have to look in there anymore. Be done with them. We haven't really seen Combs well, run and gun. We've seen him move, yeah. but I haven't I seen it like. He seems to be pretty patient today. Yeah, I yeah. was surprised. I, I thought he, he, every time I see him, he's going like crazy. You know? Exactly. And you can't tell if he's desperate or he is just putting the nail farther in the, the coffin. coffin. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he don't know because he keeps running quick. Yeah, he's always on the move. This would be a feat, though. I know Rayburn's great, one of the best lakes in the country. Two o'clock. He's so minutes. close to 60 pounds, 20 pounds per day in sure late September or mid-September. Like that is That's strong. That is strong. That's strong well, wherever you go. Miles we got to go. He's checking his. too choppy if I get on that bank. Distance right now. 21 miles. 30 minutes. Yeah. He's got 45 minutes left in his day. I'm good with it. That gives us 15 minutes, man. He's got He's it dialed in. Way. He's got it dialed in. Might be the last cast we see from Josh Douglas, but the last fish we saw from him, four pounder. And on other days where you need a nine and you need an eight, today it could be a seven and a four that gets it done for you. Small either. The way the fishies look, you know, these guys don't know, but it definitely looks like that's gonna be the case today. And Josh is still panicking as if he doesn't have enough. And, and he may not, but unofficially, what we've seen today, by far the best bag of anyone on camera. It will be interesting. We've got 45 minutes left in the fishing competition, but 30 minutes left of Bassmaster Live. Join us, watch the fireworks. Whoever is fishing and making the most casts at the end of this 30 minutes might be the one that catches that key fish. Josh Douglas, unofficial leader. Chris Wilson, second. Keith Combs, third. Daryl Gleason, fourth. And Brian Schott, fifth. Join us. The last 30 minutes is coming up. And follow it on to weigh in right after the crown of champion. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. 
You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome to the final day coverage. Final 30 minutes of fishing going on at the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Raver. Thank you for joining us for our live coverage today brought to you by Nationwide. And Josh Douglas has been dominating the coverage today because he's got two of the better sized fish that have entered live wells today. And that is the reason he is our unofficial leader. Chris Wilson coming from back in the pack around seventh or eighth into second place. Keith Combs, Daryl Gleason all still having a shot. Really one key fish to be the one that gets you over the top. And be we saw bass, bass. we saw Douglas do oh that boy. in two different ways. A seven and a half earlier, oh and then he caught a Come four here. later. Come here. Seven and Come a half here. was big as he was still building his limit. Yes! Huh? Yes! I told you I got bit right here, dude. I got it. Wow. Yeah! Oh, oh. Come on, like we mentioned, the reason that he's on top, he's got two of the right bites, and this is the second of those two. His co-angler knew it immediately. Nice, nice call, Josh, because he knows hey, not, not going to be in question there. Going to make a two-pound upgrade for him, and that is why he's on the top of the leaderboard. Brian Snowden joining us. Hey, thank you and Chad for joining us all day long today, uh, bringing some awesome Elite Series insight. And we're going to just walk through that elite series set the elite series schedule so far and what we've been uh, we've been from florida to new york <laughs> everywhere in the middle we started off at st john's <laughs> a little different st john's than than what we saw in 2019. yeah definitely a different you know it was different we had a lot of wind that year and uh this year it just seemed like the the grass wasn't really prevalent at all a lot more pad fishing a lot more pad fishing some canals came into play we saw guys like kyle watcher catch a 10 pounder jake whitaker with that seven pounder and it wasn't easy to get a lot of bites. Colder temperatures, you see them bundled up in Florida. You yes. don't normally see that. That's not, that doesn't bode well for Florida no. fishing. And uh, he did something out of the norm, went north, went to, towards Jacksonville, something we've never seen that pay off, and it paid. It was the right storm for him this week. And I think that was a lot because of the lack of grass. He found that creek with all the pads in it, and that's just uh, less pressure than all the pads that we were fishing down the lake. Hey, he showed you, hey, I'm a dynamic angler. I've won on, I've won on Lake Lanier, and I've won now at St. John's River. Then we took a couple months off, not on purpose, but because of COVID, we took a couple months off and came back strong at Lake Eufaula. And boy, were the fans on ESPN2 and the anglers ready to get it going. Yeah, we were definitely ready to get started after that break, and what a place to start. The offshore fishing uh, was f fantastic, and I mean, these guys were really impressive with what they did in that top 10. We got to see Buddy Gross do one of those. You mentioned it earlier, when guys are eighth, ninth, 10th place, it's not uncommon for them to come back and have a shot to win. He did that, 27 pounds and an ounce. 27 pounds and 11 ounces, my bad. 84 pounds eight ounces overall and he came back from 10th to first to win that event and this incredible we're going to chickamauga in <laughs> exactly. our next three events exactly the one that's right across to the front of his jersey then we took a little bit more of a break because we had our new york swing slated for late july the st lawrence river plus lake ontario this year a little bit different than what we've done in past years and paul mueller had a shot to win another elite series event yeah, and I, I just think here weather got him. Um, you know, he was on the quality it takes to win. And uh, my hat's off to Chris, though. He uh, braved it out there. And that's bigger stuff than I like to be in. And I was actually fishing out on the lake. And it was fantastic smallmouth fishing. Some of the best I've ever been associated with, other than Big Bay tonight. Hey, you made a top 10 at St. Lawrence River in past years, so you know what it takes. And for those guys, hey, if you're Canadian, you have to fish in that because you don't have that long of a season to fish in. You have to fish in those <laughs> waves. He's used to it, and Chris Johnston paid off with a win there. The next week, we went down the road about an hour and a half away to Lake Champlain, where a New Yorker transplanted to Arkansas but found his roots back in New York at Champlain, Jamie Hartman. Yeah, you know, and Jamie's always consistent in New York, and he's consistent all over, but uh, excellent tournament up there. We had a great time. I'm just getting, to, I'm impressed with Champlain's smallmouth population. It was really impressive this year. We saw that turn. It, it, day one, day two seemed like you had to have largemouth in your bag. And then when we hit day three, day four, it was like all smallmouth guys started to dominate. And Brandon Polinick, he just wanted a chance. And it was crazy. Final day, we see him idling out. And he was the most confident of anyone in the field. And he was fifth place leaving the dock. 
came back from his deficit to win there. We took about two weeks off, went up to Lake St. Clair, where we got uh, a third of the playing field. No Canada waters in play, but it still produced. It was the best event of the season weight-wise for the cut. Oh, you know, and it, even, even with Canada out of the picture, this is one of the, the, the best places to fish for smallmouth and one of my favorite fisheries. It's just uh, it's a lot of different ways to catch the smallmouth, and they're all basically 17 feet of shallow. We got to see some Canadians factor in that one as well. Chris and Corey both made the cut for the final day. Corey coming up just short because a guy from Alabama, who would have thunk it? A guy from Florida leads three days of the event, and a guy from Alabama takes the lead on the final day and wins. Came from eighth place, 22-13 on the final day. We said the first guy to catch two five-pounders was going to win that event, and Bill Weidler, after we said that, went ahead and caught two five-pounders and made it easy on us. From a guy who had a very tough start to the season, low in the Angler of the Year points, Big time win, proving that he's here and he deserves to be. Oh yeah, and hats off to Bill. You know, I know he's yes. had a rough time this year, but uh, one tournament will definitely make the break for you. Now he can call himself forever Bassmaster Elite Series champion, Bill Widler. And that's how we've gotten here. Five Elite Series events under our belt, plus the Classic. We got to see Hank Cherry. We didn't mention that in the Elite Series recap, but Hank Cherry won the Classic in March at Gunnersville. We will now restart our season after another couple weeks off. Uh, in, in just a few weeks, late September, we'll be back at Lake Gunnersville. It'll be different. What do you expect from Gunnersville, Santee, and Chickamauga back to back to back weeks to kick off uh, the second <laughs> half of the year? Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of changes in the points. I think, um, you know, Gunnersville and Chickamauga, I think, will be the most consistent fish catching. Uh, for me, uh, boy, you know, Santee, it's, it's, it's going to be hit or miss. <laughs> I've never fished it. It's fantastic phenomenal fishery in the springtime but I don't really know what to expect uh, this this time of year and uh, without a lot of you know there's not a lot of milfoil hydrilla out there so that's going to be the I think the wild card in these next three. Uh, fans are going to be able to learn a lot about fall fishing it's going to be unique you're going to be able to see a lot of things transpire that you wouldn't if they would have been in March and April obviously you guys love big bass they're going to be there but you're going to have to teach a lot of people how to hey combat tough fishing and that's what we've learned today. We've learned this week that, hey, even in mid-September at Sam Rayburn with water temps in the high 80s, you can still catch big bags. And we've seen three different anglers catch 27 pounds in a single day. This is one of them. He started the week off with the lead, 27 pounds, 10 ounces on day one. Masayuki Matsushita yes. Yes. started quick wow. today the in top. the dark still. Catch a three pounder. Yeah. And then he went for a little bit of a lull, stayed on his spot. He didn't jump around like a lot of other people. And then he caught this six pounder. We thought, oh. okay, he's got some good quality, a three and a six. <sighs> if he can put together a limit, that'll yes. be ideal. And, yes. and he just has not been able to do that yes. since then, since this <laughs> fish, Brian, <laughs> just one yeah, spot of bass. You know, and that's the roller coaster ride we live as anglers. You just, you know, you, you start out that way in your day and you think it's uh, going to be all downhill from there. And then things just don't pan out. And that's one of the things you just have to, uh, Keep your head down, fish all eight hours like it was the beginning of the, the first hour. And you don't, want, you don't want to get a false clue. That three pounder is great, but it could have told him to stay when he should have left. Yes. And he would have maybe had a better day. You never know. Daryl Gleason, hey, he wanted to lock a jig, a, a three quarter ounce VNM football jig in his hand all day long. Did not get the opportunity to do that. It was slow go, so he picked up a drop shot, filled his limit. You can see right there when it was going on, it was fast and furious for him and his co angler. He filled that limit with a drop shot, and then he said, okay, now time to pick up the jig and roll with it the rest of the day. And he's only got one call since then. Right, you know, and that's just the thing. You know, when he had those biggest, those big stringers from the previous days, they were all basically on the football jig. And, and uh, unfortunately, that, that happens a lot of times, you know, especially as the pressure mounts on the lake and it's the weekend. What's incredible is you can see a 27-pound bag for him yesterday, all five on a jig. Day one, three of them on a jig, 17 pounds. Today, one of them on a jig, nine pounds. Yeah. That shows you to uh, this week and today how the jig has produced better quality than uh, the drop shot and, and some other baits. But a guy who we knew, hey, I'm not gonna see a spin around. I'm not gonna see no. a drop shot in his hand. <laughs> not with Keith. Keith Combs is gonna lock a football jig and lock a crankbait in his hand, and he's gonna go to work on all of his uh, history and all the stuff, all of his efforts to put in work and practice, find the brush piles and the offshore spots he needed. And it went well for him early, but he still hasn't gotten over that hump. He needs, he just needs that, he needs that one, six or seven yeah, pounder. One good bite, you know, and. and don't count him out yet. It's still got time. It's still has time, you know. And uh, 
If there's anyone that knows that lake, it's it's Keith. So uh, we know you're not safe with Keith Combs <laughs> in a, on a lake in Texas until the clock says zero, and even then, you're not safe until he weighs him in. <laughs> He's got to weigh him in for you to know if you're safe or not. You could you could be losing the whole time. Keith Combs won as a two-time Elite Series champion. Close. He was a runner-up in Angler of the Year. And he is one that we have kept our eyes on all day long. And a guy who started, hey, third place, about a pound and a half, pound and three quarters behind, with a good shot to win this event, Josh Douglas. And boy, did he get started exactly like Daryl Gleason. Drop he shot, drop small it. fish to fill his limit. And the difference here is he was the one that captured the big ones, the, the seven and a half, the four. And, uh, you know, that, that just, I think their strategies are both very similar. And one thing that is different about him, you can say, okay, drop shot, maybe it's just the spot, the location, but it's the lure selection. He's picked up a drop shot, and other guys have picked up a drop shot and a jig. He switched to a swim bait when he wanted to do it. Some of those shallower brush piles, those swim bait, uh, the, they will bite a swim bait much more than those deeper ones. And this seven and a half pounder really put him ahead of the field early on in this day. Well, you know, and then that, that the confidence, and then he, he calmed down a lot. Yes. And the great thing about a swim bait, it's up above the brush, it's not down in it very much. And so. one good thing is he has a five fish limit, two of them on a drop shot, because he has culled three out with swim bait fish, and that's gonna be the deal. How many have you had, how many do you have in your bag that are drop shot fish? Well, this is his latest right. cull that we got to see. Either. Like you said, going with something, switching up a little bit, and then sticking with that. At certain times, he has not been afraid to pick up a drop shot. No, he definitely hasn't. I think that probably is when he's worked the brush for a little bit. Josh Douglas sitting on top of the leaderboard. Mayas Masayuki, Matsushita. I promised I was going to get it completely by the end of the day, but I feel like I'm getting worse at it as the day goes on. No, that's just fatigue. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You've had a long morning. <laughs> You've had to do some babysitting today. I, I want you, you've been, you've been a guy who's been on the Elite Series since its inception. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're one of the original Elite Series anglers. Back then it was just a few guys. You know, Kota Kiriyama, Takahiro Mori, for the guys who were, came over from Japan and really like set it on fire for that sport. There were some other guys who preceded them as well. And Marizo Shimizu, can't leave him out. Talk to me about Taku Ito, Bassmaster Elite Series rookie, second in points, leading rookie of the year, and then you have guys uh, like Matsushidu, Matsushita and, uh, and some other Japanese anglers really competing on the Opens level, trying to make the elites. Yeah, they're just very impressive. They love the sport, uh, they love to fish, and uh, you can see the, you know, just with everything they do, they, they, their work, ethic, work ethic is uh, second to none, and then the attention to detail. Doesn't matter if it's in the lures they manufacture, everything they do, you know, is, um, always exact, precise, and they pay attention to the details. I think we have, uh, I think if I'm correct, uh, Tanabe won, he won a big event. Um, I think he won at Kentucky Lake, and then we've had Ben Matsubu has done well. Uh -huh. Some of those uh, Asian anglers that have really set that fire for these anglers to come and pursue it. At the last event, after two days, Daisuke Ayuki was in the top, uh, top 10, 10 after yeah. two days, and then he, he fell out, but he obviously, yes was doing well. It is To me, it is impressive. We, Ken Iobi, he was on the Elite Series for a little while and still does great in the Opens. They do have a big learning curve because they don't they don't have some of the types of fisheries we have. Taku Ito had never fished for smallmouth until this year and he gets three top tens on smallmouth. It is, it is, it is well, massive. You gotta, you gotta realize that uh, in Japan, they use a lot of those techniques, those fin finesse techniques that are perfect for the smallmouth fishing up north. And uh, you know, there's, that's the reason why those guys shine so much. When it gets tough, they are able to catch those fish when no one else can make them bite. And they, these guys have heavy, intense tournaments in Japan from the bank. They have a lot of bank fishing tournaments. And they, so they, you have to love it to pursue it in the United States and come over here and make it. And they've been doing uh, fantastic with that. I can't, I, I'm just more impressed every time I see some of these anglers and what they already know and what they'll learn just with, I can't wait to see how Taku takes the southern swing. I know he did great up north. He qualified through the Central Opens, which included Smith Lake, yeah. Grand Lake, things like that. Yeah, I, I want to see. I want to see the Gunnersvilles, the Chickamauga. Those, when three bites a day is good, how how they go maybe, for him in the points. Maybe race. number five. 
And I think they'll, you know, they'll, they'll fare real well the tougher the fishing becomes because they're able to adapt so to the finesse technique. Wow. The, the finesse line. techniques, and they're not afraid to use those techniques where a lot of times someone like myself, we're going to stick with a bigger rod, exactly. bigger line. Yeah. What brought you there? The history, maybe? Yeah. They don't have history on some of these places, so they have to it's, fish for it. It's your, all new. Yep. Yeah. And I did get an update from this guy's cameraman. Jake Latondris was with, with, is with Keith he, Combs, and they said that he upgraded with a three pounder. Uh, oh. His camera was down, so. I've got That's a feeling he might not have a big bag, but he's got his smallest fish has to be close to three, three pounds. pounds now. He might have three three pounders. And so he's getting close to the 17. He's getting close to that mark, yes. And he was only about I want to say he, he started the day in, he started the day in fifth, but he was a pound and four ounces behind Douglas, and Douglas was then you know uh, two pounds and five ounces out of the lead, you know so. That's kind of the deal. He's going to have to have a, at least a pound and a half more than Douglas to be able to overcome that deficit. Appreciate the cameraman facilitating that. Obviously, cell coverage as they head south. Gets worse. It gets, on, yeah. yeah. Because the cities disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except until you get all the way down at the bottom where Jasper, Texas is, our host of this week. Small. I know if it's 14 inches. <laughs> It's just been so impressive, though, to watch these guys. You know, this is the first time I got got the opportunity to come down here and do this with you guys, and and uh, to see some of the the things they do and and how patient they are with the fishing brush. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I guess I, I force things a little too quickly. You know, I would have broke off earlier, and we watched Josh land one of those fish. So, oh, yeah. pretty cool. God, it's pretty cool to watch these there. guys. You're getting a little be bit of a scouting best. report. I know you've had probably oh, 14 boy. scouting reports with rookie classes oh, coming into the elites in the past <laughs> years. But Come this here. one, this is a good chance to see them in action. You don't just see their name yeah. on paper and see <laughs> the results. You get to see how they fish and and get to Apparently, watch your quarterback We're going to have some stiff bit. competition coming, <laughs> coming this way. Yes. Adding 12 from the Opens if they all accept invites. One from the Bass Nation. I'll keep though, that makes five. Come out. And this is our second time we've ever had live coverage on the final day of an Open. We didn't have it at the one in Florida at the beginning of the year in January. It was, oh, oh. It was immediately after New Year. And uh, the call from the anglers of, we, we would love to see the Opens live. We got to see a compelling Arkansas River out of Muskogee, Oklahoma in the Central Opens to kick off live coverage. And then we have Rayburn this week, and then we'll have Hartwell in about a week and a half, ten days well, uh, be before, a good one the, too. before the start that'll day. Be that should good be good. One. And like I mentioned, yes, the Arkansas River out of Muskogee, Oklahoma. Those pools there, um, the one pool above Muskogee, mm -hmm. and then the pool below Muskogee, which is the Kerr Pool. We got to see some guys really do battle close quarters fishing. Dale Hightower, one of Dale, the yeah, anglers. Exactly. You got to. He's one of those river rats that is from Oklahoma and knows how to just knows how to fish those types of fisheries. One thing that was interesting to me with, with the come on of, of beaver baits and those types of uh, soft plastics, every guy seemingly one. was flipping like a big baby. ribbon tail yes. worm. It was going old school on some of these tough one. river systems. The old school baits seem to always come back. And for some reason, they like that big 10 inch worm there. You throw it on the laydowns and yes. stuff. And I don't know what they think it is, yes, but they uh, definitely Lord. like it on the Arkansas River. Freaking monster. And then John Garrett. Yes. We had a compelling oh storyline here. Dude. John Garrett, she was he, had a, he was flipping dirt. a rage bug and throwing a square Shoot bill. Had a fantastic day. Young college stud. Fished yes. the classic from the college series. Was one of those anglers that excelled. Yes. Has a chance to win this event. Gets caught up yes. in the moment, gets caught Freaking up in a flurry, does not yes. realize he had oh. six fish in the live Thank well, and uh, had a two pound yeah. penalty. Which Ends up losing that weird. event by just a few ounces, oh. and uh, would have won it if he would have known how many fish were in his live well. He had just a squeaker, that was keeper number one, that, that he miscounted. That was when he forgot. He called on live with Chris Bowes and, and broke it down right there, and it was uh, very brutal to watch oh. that happen, but. You know when things like that happen, just like with Brandon Polinick, when he was a young angler, you're going to grow from it, you're going to get better, you're going to learn, and it's going to make you uh, a more well-rounded angler. You're not going to leave anything on He will definitely not do that again. But, you know, for him, the, the Arkansas River's water is awful dirty. So sometimes when you fill that up in the live oh, well, and exactly. they're small, hard to see in there. So, you know, it can happen. Well, we've got our top 10 unofficial leaderboard there. We've got three guys that didn't register bass track catches at the bottom, Logan Latuso, Albert Collins, and Jason Christie. So watch for the weigh-in. We're going to watch those guys weigh in first because that's where they started uh, the day, 12th, 11th, and, and 10th place. And we will watch them all weigh in and see who will win the BassPro.com Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn. 
Someone's gonna maybe get a classic berth. Uh, people are gonna inch closer to Elite Series qualification. Hey, and shoot, somebody's gonna go home and be able to uh, have a good payday. Have yeah, a good exactly. payday. Payday, right. we've already doled out checks from 13th place to 40th on the pro and co side, and all these guys are fighting for uh, more money in their pocket, some creds to their name. And look at that leaderboard right there. Josh Douglas on top, Chris Wilson, Keith Combs, and Brian uh, Schott. Second, third, and fifth didn't fish the other opens. They will only give a classic berth back to the Elite Series if they win. If Josh Douglas wins or Daryl Gleason wins, they will take the classic berth. Nice. Either way, it's gonna be fireworks. Will a guy like Keith Combs, last Come stop of the day, 15 minutes left to fish right now. They check in yes. 2.45 Central Time, 3.45 Eastern Time. Will this seven and a half pounder, will this four pounder for Josh yes. Douglas be the fish I told you I got that gets right him here what he's always dreamed of. Yeah. An Opens win, a classic berth. Oh. Make sure you join us. Hey, Chad Morgan Taylor, shout out to you. Chad, uh, Brian Snowden, shout out to you. Thank you for joining us as a color analyst. Make sure you tune in to weigh in. See who wins this event. 345 Eastern time, Bassmaster.com. Watch it all unfold.